Hello and welcome. The voice changed, but the story can continue. On demand. I will continue this series. I was searching for new ones to share with you. But if you want this one, who am I to argue? Let's continue in our journey with Evan. This is Necromancer of the Shadows. Chapter 201. Evan was startled when someone suddenly tapped on his shoulder and almost jumped down from his moving hoverboard. He quickly turned around to see who was behind him and was stunned when he saw a smiling busty beauty behind him. The female behind him was a rank hunter Lael he saw earlier. He stopped his hoverboard and jumped down from it while looking at her with furrowed eyebrows. He doesn't understand why she came here. Lael looked at Evan with an amused look when he jumped away from her. She received an order to capture this guy today morning. She was thinking it will be a pain to search for him in the city and capture him. But surprisingly earlier she noticed him while Aaron was telling other hunters about the new situation of the Orc Den. At that time she used one of her skills and left a mark on him so that she will be able to find him easily. She was keeping an eye on the mark all this time, so that she will not lose his location. Do you need something from me? Evan asked her after jumping down. Even though his expressions were calm outside, he was thinking about how he can run away from here. He can't understand why she came here. He doesn't even know her, and from the way she was looking at him, he can feel something is not right. She is an A rank hunter. If she decided to kill him he has no way to resist. Even with shadow energy, he wasn't sure about doing anything against her. Shadow energy can last just for one or two seconds. But he doesn't know if it can increase his power to A rank. Plus if he uses shadow energy and Lael sense danger, she can fly into the sky. If she flies into the sky he will not be able to do anything even with shadow energy. I need you to come with me. Lael answered Evan's question with the same smile on her face. Come with you. Why? Evan asked with a raised eyebrow. Nothing much, one of my friends asked me to bring you. Lael said while shrugging her shoulder. Someone asked her to bring me over. Evan looked at her with a confused look, then he thought about something and asked. Are you talking about Jeffrey? In Aquaville City the only person he can think of who wants to meet him can only be Jeffrey. He came here for the first time so he can't think of anyone else. A look of confusion appeared on Lael's face for a moment when she heard the name Jeffrey, but it instantly disappeared, and she nodded her head. Yes, it's Jeffrey who asked me to bring you over. Seeing her Evan can easily tell she was lying. Just what the hell she wants with me. Evan thought while trying to figure out a way to escape from here. Seeing Evan did not say anything after hearing her Lael clicked her tongue. She can already see that he is not going to come with her just because she is asking. She could have easily knocked him out earlier and brought him with her. But if she knocked him out she will have to carry him all the way back to the city. Even though it is nothing much for an A rank hunter, she still finds it troublesome to carry someone. She was hoping he will follow her with his own free will. And she will not have to carry him. Hey, you should know if I want to bring you with me. You can't do anything. Don't you think you should just obediently follow me? It will save both of us from troublesome things. The smile on Lael's face disappeared, and she asked while looking at him without any expression. Even though it pains him, Evan knew she was right. Currently, he can't do anything to her. If he uses shadow energy and fails, it will even more dangerous for him. He will lose most of his power after using shadow energy, because his body is too weak to witness its power. Plus, Lael will definitely try to find out about shadow energy if she sees him using it. Damn it. I should have absorbed those calls earlier, even though it was risky Evan can. T help but curse thinking about his current situation. If his Monarch core advanced to C rank, he might have a chance to escape from here. But in his current situation, he can't think of anything that can help him. Alright Evan decided to go with her after thinking about all the things. From the looks of things, he can tell that she doesn't want to kill him and there is no way he will be able to escape from her even if he tries. There were just two options for him. Either he goes with her while being conscious, or go with her while being unconscious. It was no surprise he chose to go while being conscious. If he is unconscious there is no way he will be able to escape from her. But if he is conscious he might get a chance to get away from her. Good Layla nodded her head and smiled after hearing his response. If he refused she would have to carry him all the way. Of course, in return, she would have given him a good beating before he passed out. 
After he agreed they once again started to move towards the city. All this time Evan was looking for an opportunity to escape. Sadly he did not get any opportunity even when they were about to reach the city. Lael already took away his phone and storage ring. Even if he secretly wanted to send a message to Jeffrey. He can't do that without his phone. When he was near the city he thought about asking for help from the guards at the entrance. Although he knew there were very low chances that they can help him. He still has to try something. He has no information where she will take him after entering the city. Asking for help from the guards might be his last chance. But when they were just one kilometer away from the city gate, even before he could react, Lael gave Evan a karate chop, and his vision turned black. Chapter 202. Bang exclamation point bar bang dash bar bar bang dash. This one is good said a person while banging his fist against a closed metal door. Let's change the rhythm for a bit the person said, and started to bang his fist against the door in a different rhythm. The person has back hair, a fair face, and abyss black eyes. He was inside a small room with nothing but a bed sheet which was laying on the floor. A small bathroom was attached to the room, and the person was knocking on the door with his eyes closed. The person was obviously Evan. It has been five days since he was abducted by Lael. After receiving a karate chop from her when he woke up again, he found himself inside this small room. After waking up he mumbled some second-rate lines like, What happened? Where is he? Who bring him here? And then like his mind started working he remembered all the things. Since then he is trapped inside this small room. During these five days, he didn't hear anything from Lael. He tried to ask from the person who brings his meals every day. But that person doesn't speak anything. And he can't even kill him to escape from here. Because that person never opens the door and sent his food inside through the small gap between the door and the floor. Because of being imprisoned in a small room where you can't hear anything other than the sound of footsteps that comes when the person delivers the food. And little to no space for moving, Evan was going insane. Plus, from the inside, the room was completely white, including the metal door. Seeing just white all day makes his mind dizzy. He was feeling like he was thrown into an endless sea of white, where is no one else other than him. Instead of a room, it was a mental torture chamber for him. Not being able to do anything in a place like this, all he can do was to make some sounds while banging on the door to not go insane. I will F you asterisk king kill that bit asterisk h once I got out from here. Evan thought while keeping his eyes closed and continuing to make sound with the door. He feels dizzy just by opening his eyes and seeing all white around him. These past five days can be said to be the worst nightmare of his life. If he doesn't make the sound with the door and sits there doing nothing, he will start to hear the sound of his own heartbeat because of the deathly silence. After that other sounds like breathing, the sound of blinking eyes, gurgling of the stomach. All kinds of sounds will make him lose his sense of sound. He won't even be able to stand up properly because of losing his sense of sound in a place where you can't see anything other than an endless white desert. Suddenly other than the sound of the metal door, Evan heard the sound of approaching footsteps. Honestly, he wasn't sure why they didn't make this room soundproof. Because it would have been even more torturous for the person being imprisoned there. But it was not like he is complaining. Because hearing a sound that is not of the metal door, give him some relief. After a moment a plastic plate with some rice and a strange curry, came sliding inside from below the door. Hearing the sound of plate sliding Evan didn't open his eyes, but he stopped banging his fist against the door. Oi, where is that bit asterisk h? Evan said, but his voice came out louder than he wanted. He wasn't even able to control his own voice because of his distorted sense of sound. Even though he asked the question, Evan didn't expect any reply from the other side. So you still haven't lost your mind, huh? But surprisingly someone spoke, and it was the voice of the person he wanted to kill the most currently. Evan felt his anger rising just hearing that voice, but he tried his best to stay calm. Didn't you say you brought me here because someone wants to meet me? Then where is that person, and why am I being imprisoned here? Well, the person who asked me to capture you is not in the Aquaville city. When I informed her I captured you she asked me to bring you over. But currently, I am busy with some important task, so I told her I will bring you once I finish my work here. He heard Layla's voice and raised an eyebrow. He paid attention to the word, she. Which means the person who wants to capture him is a female. Is Olivia the one behind all this? Evan can. T help but think after hearing her. He wanted to ask her, 
But she spoke once again. As for the reason why you are being kept in this room is that she asked me to break your mentality before I bring you there. So you can expect more things in the near future. This room is just the beginning. It will take me at least one month to complete my business here. In this one month, I will let you experience different kinds of things. Lael said while laughing a little. Evan felt anxiousness and anger at the same time after hearing her. Hey B I asterisk ch. Why don't you open the door? And then let's see who is going to break whose mentality. Oh. Why should I do that? Currently. I don't have time to waste on a weakling like you. But don't worry, once I erase all the evidence that I was behind the creation of that orc den, I will play with you to my heart. Content Lael said to Evan, and started to walk away from there without waiting for his response. On the other hand, Evan was also stunned when he heard what she just said. What does she mean by saying she was the one who created the orc den? Chapter 203 she is behind the creation of that orc den. When Evan heard those words suddenly he remembered something. Before he joined the mission of the orc den he read about its details. In the details, it was mentioned that the orc den might be created because of the dungeon outbreak. They suspected that there might be a dungeon somewhere deep within the mountain range. But now Layla just said she was behind the creation of that orc den. If what she just said is true, then doesn't this mean she knew where that dungeon is located? and she can somehow cause an outbreak in it. Evan thought and remembered what Valerie told him when she was giving him details of Carlos. Valerie told me the current dungeon outbreaks that are happening all over might be caused by the Dark Guild. And now that BIT asterisk H just said she was behind the creation of that orc den, which means she somehow caused an outbreak in that dungeon, doesn't this mean she is someone from the Dark Guild? Evan took a deep breath and tried to calm down. All this time he was wondering why he was being held here, and who wanted to capture him. But after hearing what Layla just said he finally understood why he is being held here. Even though it was just his speculation he was 90% sure that she is someone from the Dark Guild. He can't think of anyone else who will capture him. Damn. I completely forget about them since they did nothing after I came back from the Frost World Dungeon. Evan cursed and become anxious. He wasn't sure who asked Layla to capture him, but since that person can even ask an A rank hunter to do his beating, doesn't that mean she is at least A plus rank? Or might even be an S rank hunter? If he can't escape from here now, he might never get a chance later on. Did they somehow find out that I was the one who killed Carlos? Evan thought and found it was quite possible. If they really found out that I was the one who killed Carlos, they will surely ask me how I killed him even though I was just a D-rank hunter at that time. The more he thinks about it, the more he found his situation troublesome. What will they do if they found out I have two calls? Evan can. T help but shuddered thinking about what will happen. My monarch core is inside my heart. What will happen if they took out my heart? Ah. What a stupid question, of course I will die if they took out my heart. Evan thought and stood up, but when he stood up, he wasn't able to balance himself properly. Seeing all white around him made his mind dizzy, and he once again closed his eyes. F you asterisk king lose of senses. Evan cursed and sat down once again. Previously he thought since they just locked him here, and didn't kill him, he might be safe. But now that he knew it is the dark guild who is behind all this, he can't keep his composer. Plus there was another problem. There is no freaking way I can endure one month's imprisonment here. Evan thought and made up his mind. Even though Layla already took away his storage ring and other equipment including the armor and the concealment ring he was wearing. He still has all of his important things in his shadow storage. Even the cores that he needs to advance are in his shadow storage. Because of the danger of advancing here, he did not use them in the past five days. But now that he knew his life might be in real danger, plus he has to stay in this place for one month, he couldn't care less about the fact that he might get in more serious trouble if he tries to advance. Even if Layla finds out something is happening here and came to stop me, I can use shadow energy and try to kill her. In this closed up space I will have a higher advantage while using shadow energy. Evan thought and took a deep breath. In the wilderness, he didn't fight against her using shadow energy, 
because the chances of success in that open space were very low. He can get a boost for only one or two seconds, and killing her in that open space was very hard. But here in this closed up space if he used shadow energy the chance of killing her was very high. And there was another problem that was bothering him. What if nothing happened even after I advanced my courtesy rank? This was the main cause of Evan's nervousness. If his monarch core advanced normally and he doesn't get any class from it, he was sure that it will be close to impossible for him to escape from here. He might become powerful enough to kill B rank hunter easily after his monarch core advance. Or he might even be able to kill B plus rank hunter somehow. But without getting a class it was impossible for him to do something against an A rank hunter. Actually, he knew that even if get a class, the chances of him being able to kill Layla is very low. After all, a rank hunters are not someone you can kill easily. He knew all this. But he still wanted to advance because even if he don't become strong enough to kill an A rank hunter, he might get a class or skill which can help him escape from here. Currently, he just wanted something that can help him escape from here. He was fine as long as he can escape from here. As for taking revenge against Lael, he can do that anytime once he is strong enough. After making up his mind he was ready to absorb the calls. But he did not start to absorb the calls immediately. He waited for few hours because he knew Lael might still be there. Since she just delivered his food. After three hours Evan used his shadow storage. And took out the C plus rank core from it. Huh. There is no point thinking about useless things. Let's just advance and see what will happen. Evan pushed back all the worries he was feeling and put the C plus rank core into his mouth. Chapter 204. The C plus rank turned into energy, and that energy rushed towards his monarch core, who greedily absorbed all of it. After absorbing all the energy from the C plus rank core, he took out the B rank core that he got from the orc earlier. After taking a deep breath he put the core inside his mouth. Just like before this core also turned into energy, and went toward his monarch core. Just like last time when he absorbed the B rank core, he felt an uncomfortable feeling spreading all over his body, because of the high amount of energy that the B rank core holds. He didn't lose focus because of the uncomfortable feeling, and fully focused on the level of his core. The amount of energy was way larger than the last time. His monarch core continued to absorb the energy, and was very close to leveling up. Just a little more, Evan muttered after absorbing all the energy. He used his shadow storage and took out the last B rank core. His heart was beating loudly as he looked at the B rank core in his hand. After absorbing this core he was sure his core will advance. Will I get any class? What will happen if I don't get any class? What if that BIT asterisk H came here while I am advancing? What if I get a class? But that can't help me to get away from here. Many questions came into his mind when he took out the last core. He was incredibly nervous, and was trying to calm down his heart which was beating like a drum. He took a deep breath and pushed back all the useless thoughts to the back of his mind. Why the hell I am thinking too much, just absorb it and get over with this. Evan said to himself and put the last core into his mouth. The core also turned into energy and rushed towards his monarch core. His core was absorbing the energy at the same pace as before, but for him, it felt like his core was absorbing energy very slowly. Almost there. Evan muttered when his core absorbed half of the energy of the B rank core. Soon his core reached at the peak of D rank, and there was still some energy left. Even after reaching at the peak of D rank, his monarch core continues to absorb the remaining energy. Crack crack. Evan seemed to hear the sound of something cracking. At first, he thought it was just his imagination, and the wall that was stopping his core to reach at C rank was cracking because of the energy. But he soon realized it is not his imagination. Crack crack. When he focused on the cracking sound his mind went black for a moment. When he noticed the cracking sound was actually coming from his monarch core. What the foo. Evan was stunned when he saw what was happening. But even before he can understand why his core was breaking a terrible pain rose from his chest. Evan almost screamed out loud feeling the terrible pain. He bit at the sleeve of his shirt and tried his best not to scream. The pain originated from his heart where his monarch core was located. He felt like someone was ripping apart his heart. The small monarch core that was the size of the rice grain was slowly breaking apart. 
Cracks continue to appear on his monarch core as it absorbs the energy of the B-rank core. Orc. Evan bit at the sleeve of his shirt with even more strength and endured the pain. The pain was so high that he felt like he will pass out at any moment. Slowly the solid monarch core started to turn into liquid. When his core started to turn into liquid the pain he was feeling intensified even more. A rug. He tried his best not to scream out loud. When his core started to turn into liquid he felt his heart was also melting along with it. Soon the small core completely turned into liquid form. When his core turned into complete liquid, the pain he was feeling was so high that his mind almost blanked out. Luckily after his core turned into a complete liquid the pain he was feeling did not increase anymore. Evan did not even dare to breathe properly because he felt intense pain when he tried to breathe. After a few seconds, his monarch core which turned into liquid once again started to turn solid. As the liquid of his monarch core started to turn solid once again, the pain Evan was feeling also started to decrease. But soon Evan noticed something. When 1% of the liquid once again turned solid, he felt his core was trying to form a connection with something. He did not understand what was the thing his core was trying to connect. But he can feel as the core turned into solid the connection was growing stronger. At first, he did not find any problem with this. And just continued to sit there feeling relieved that the pain in his heart was decreasing. But when 5% of the liquid turned solid, and the connection grew even stronger, he started to feel a little uncomfortable. 10%. When 10% of the liquid turned solid, and the connection grew even stronger, the uncomfortable feeling turned into strange pressure. It was the pressure that came from the very depth of his body. He did not feel uncomfortable physically, but for some reason, he was feeling a strange pressure which was giving him a very bad feeling. When 12% of the liquid turned solid, along with pressure he started to feel pain all over his body. Evan did not understand what was happening, or what was the pressure and the pain he was feeling. Ugh. But the pain he was feeling soon started to increase along with the pressure. But when 15% of the liquid turned solid, and he felt his very existence was being ripped apart, Evan finally understood what was happening. The connection his monarch core was forming was placing great pressure on his soul. He did not understand why this connection was placing a burden on his soul. But he was sure about one thing. His soul is very weak and can't handle the pressure of the connection. And if he doesn't do anything and things continue to proceed like this, his soul will shatter because of the pressure. Chapter 205 As his core continued to turn solid once again, the connection between his core and the unknown thing was also becoming stronger. Because of the connection which was getting stronger the burden on his soul was also increasing. Along with the burden, the pain he was feeling was also increasing. Ugh, stop it. Evan wasn't able to endure the pain which was coming from the depth of his soul and shouted out loud. The pain he felt when his core was breaking apart earlier was nothing when he compared it to the pain he was feeling now. As the connection grew stronger, he felt his soul was being ripped apart because of the pressure on it. He was sure that if things continue to go on like this, his soul will soon shatter because of the pressure. When 40% of the core turned solid, Evan was almost at his limits. He felt like if the pressure increased just a bit more his soul will shatter. Because of the immense pain he was feeling he already collapsed on the floor. His mind went blank because of the pain he was feeling. Feeling his vision turning black Evan wanted to laugh at himself. He thought after advancing his core to C rank, he might be able to escape from here. But here he is laying on the floor on the brink of death. He doesn't even know what the FU asterisk K is going on with his core. What was the connection it was forming? And why this connection was placing such a great burden on his soul? The pain he was feeling continued to increase as his core turned into solid form once again, and the pressure on his soul was already started to show its effect as he was losing consciousness. What a unique way to die. Evan can. T help but think when 50% of his core turned solid once again. He can feel that his soul already reached at its limit, and it can't handle more pressure. If the pressure increased just a bit more his soul will definitely shatter. Just as he thought his soul will shatter because of the pressure, the part of his core which turned solid released a strange energy. Just as his half core released that energy he felt a soothing feeling spreading all over his body. The pain which was coming from his soul started to decrease, and even the formation of his core stopped at half. The remaining half of his core stayed in liquid form, and didn't turn into a solid core. When the pain which was coming from his soul started to decrease Evan's mind also started to clear up. 
Before, he wasn't able to understand what was happening because of the pain. But now that pain was decreasing, he can finally examine his monarch core. When he examined his monarch core, he was stunned to see it was in half solid and half liquid form. What the hell is going on here? Evan muttered in a weak voice and tried to understand what was happening. He can see his core is struck between the boundary of D rank and C rank. The connection his monarch core was forming earlier also stopped at the halfway mark. Even though he didn't understand what was happening earlier and what this connection is. Evan was sure about one thing. He can't advance to see rank before this connection is fully formed. And this connection stopped because his soul was too weak to endure the pressure of this connection. Don't tell me I have to first strengthen my soul before I can advance to see rank. Evan muttered with a grave expression on his face. In his current situation, it was impossible for him to increase the power of his soul. Just when he was thinking about what should he do, the liquid part of his core which didn't turn solid because of his weak soul became restless. It started to shake violently, and Evan felt a strange power coming into his body through the incomplete connection which was formed earlier. He felt the power which came from the incomplete connection covering his entire soul. He felt like his soul was being scanned. After around 30 seconds, a burst of invisible energy came out from his body and the power scanning his soul disappeared. The power came out from Evan's body and spread all over the world. It even broke the boundaries of the different worlds, and continued to move forward. Evan who didn't know anything sat in the small room not understanding what was happening. His liquid core returned to normal, and it was not shaking anymore. Even the power which was coming through the incomplete connection stopped coming. Just what the hell is going on here? Evan muttered feeling incredibly confused by all the things that were happening. But suddenly he felt a part of the energy which scanned his soul earlier and left came back and enter into his soul once again. He was stunned when he felt something strange enter his body. But even before he can do anything a terrible headache assaulted him. F-U asterisk K, which M-O-T-H-E-R-F asterisk Kerr is messing with me. Evan can't help but curse when he felt another wave of pain. But soon another part of energy came back and enter his body. The headache he was feeling intensified, and without being able to resist he immediately lost consciousness. Thud dash. With a loud thud Evan's head hit the hard floor of the room. He lay there with a painful expression on his face. It was clear that even though he lost consciousness the pain was so great that he was still feeling it. One hour. Two hour. Three hours. Ten hours. Time continues to pass by. But Evan just lay there unconscious with a painful expression on his face. Occasionally a small part of the energy which left after scanning his soul, comes back and enters into his body. This energy was invisible, and no one was able to notice it. As the energy continued to enter his body, his core which was still in liquid form, started to turn solid, and the connection of his core with the unknown thing, was also becoming stronger. But compared to before, his core was turning solid at the pace of a snail. Chapter 206 What happened? Baphomet, also known as the Demon Monarch, asked when Zagannath, one of his five commanders, came looking for him in a hurry. We just received important news from the people who are breaking the seal on the Shadow Realm, Zagannath said. While kneeling in front of Baphomet, Zagannath is the flame demon, he was 200 centimeters tall. His skin was crimson red, and a fiery aura was covering his entire body. His head was similar to that of a lion which was currently lowered because he was in front of Baphomet. His deep orange eyes were full of power, and occasionally some sparks of fire were coming out from his body, because of his high affinity with fire. Is the seal already broken? Baphomet asked while raising an eyebrow in surprise. No master, the seal on the Shadow Realm is still not broken, Zagannath shook his head and said. But just a few minutes ago they detected a strange energy flow coming out from the Shadow Realm. At first, the energy flow was quite high, but it stopped after a few minutes. But the energy flow once again began, although it is way slower than before. A strange energy flow coming out from it. Baphomet muttered and a frown appeared on his face. According to what he knows nothing should have happened during the process of breaking the seal. Alright, I will go take a look, myself Baphomet said to Zagannath and stood up. Soon he disappeared from his place and appeared before a teleportation matrix. Since the world is very big teleportation matrixes are the common way of traveling to large distances. Baphomet stood up on the matrix and activated it. 
The teleportation matrix lit up and he disappeared from there. At a desolate place deep within a forest, a teleportation matrix shined brightly, and Baphomet appeared there. Two demons were guarding the teleportation matrix. When they saw Baphomet appearing there, they instantly lowered their heads and didn't dare to speak anything. Baphomet didn't pay any attention to them because he was thinking about what Zagonath told him earlier. He moved forward and disappeared from the place where the teleportation matrix was located. Soon he appeared in a place which was surrounded by dense trees. He moved toward the area of the dense tree, and as he moved towards them his surroundings started to change. All the dense trees started to disappear like they were just an illusion, and a small open area where some demons were gathered came into view. There were around 10 demons in that area, and all of them had a very powerful aura. Master Malfasa, another one of Baphomet's five commanders, came forward and greeted him after seeing him. Malfasa was one and a half meters tall. He had the face of a crow with two raven wings behind his back. His feet were like the claw of a beast, while his hands resembled that of humans. He is in charge of breaking the seal on the Shadow Realm, and also the person who reported about the abnormality of the Shadow Realm. Baphomet nodded his head at Malfasa and looked at the pitch black portal at the end of the open space. Seeing the entrance of the Shadow Realm Baphomet's eyes narrowed because he can also feel a strange energy flow coming out from the portal. The energy was coming out from the portal and was disappearing into the void. He approached the portal with furrowed eyebrows. But the closer he got to the portal, the more his face changed. When he was just 50 meters away from the portal, and can feel the energy flow clearly a shocked expression appeared on his face. How is this possible? Baphomet muttered to himself looking at the portal with disbelief written all over his face. There is no way something like this is possible. All the five monarchs are still alive, without one of us dying there is no way this can happen. Because of the law of the universe, there can only be five forbidden physiques holders at the same time. The current five forbidden physiques holders are Baphomet, the demon monarch, holder of the demon monarch physique. Winterclaw, the Ice Monarch, holder of the Ice Monarch Physique. Alistair Nightfall, the Blood Monarch, holder of the Blood Monarch Physique. Akosha, the Queen of Venom, holder of the Poison Monarch Physique. Alistria, the Moonlit Empress, holder of the Nature Monarch Physique. These are the current five Forbidden Physique holders. It is the law of the universe that there can't be more than five Forbidden Physique holders at the same time. When a Forbidden Physique holder reaches its C rank, a realm suitable according to their forbidden physique will be created. Like when Baphomet reached at C rank demon realm was created, and now he is the master of that realm. This realm is completely separate from the outside world, and inside the demon realm, his power increases greatly. But the most important thing about this realm is that this realm is the source of his unique energy. The demonic energy. Demonic energy is completely different from mana, and is far more powerful than it. Every Forbidden Physique holder has his own realm, and that realm provides them with a unique energy. When he reached at C rank, and the Demon Realm was created a connection between him and the Demon Realm was formed, giving him the full control over the Demon Realm. And currently, he can feel it. He is very familiar with this energy flow. The energy flow coming out from the Shadow Realm is similar to the energy flow that he felt when he formed his connection with the Demon Realm. And Baphomet is shocked because if this is true, then doesn't it mean even though all five monarchs are still alive, a sixth person has already been born with a forbidden physique and reached at sea, and currently he is forming a connection with the Shadow Realm. Chapter 207 Baphomet stood there with a dazed look not knowing what he should do. The fact that he can feel the connection being formed is the evidence that a person who has a Shadow Monarch physique reached C rank. But he was confused about how a 6 Monarch Physique holder can appear. All 5 Monarch Physique holders are still alive. So there is no way another Forbidden Physique holder can appear. Moreover, it is someone who has Shadow Monarch Physique. Shadow Monarch, the person who died years ago. Baphomet was sure that the Shadow Monarch died years ago because he is the proof of his death. After the death of the Shadow Monarch, only 4 Forbidden Physique holders were left. These four were Winterclaw, Alistair Nightfall, Akosha and Elystria. A few years after the death of the Shadow Monarch, Baphomet was born with the Demon Monarch Physique. Using his Demon Monarch Physique, he climbed through the power, and now he is the ruler of all demon races in the world. His appearance was also the confirmation that the Shadow Monarch truly died, because there can't be six Forbidden Physique holders at the same time. Some people always doubted about Shadow Monarch's death, 
But when he appeared, and the world once again had five forbidden physique holders, everyone was sure that he died. After all, there can't be six people with forbidden physiques. But here Baphomet is seeing something that should be impossible. Does it have something to do with the Shadow Monarch? Baphomet thought and tried to sense the energy flow more closely. He never truly met with the Shadow Monarch because he died before his birth. But from what he heard about him, he knew he was one of the strongest person when he was alive. Remembering what kind of outrageous things they said about him, he can't help but think that it has something to do with him. But soon a frown appeared on his face. When Baphomet closely sensed the energy flow coming out from the Shadow Realm, he realized that the energy flow was coming out very slowly. It was hundreds of times slower than the speed from which he formed the connection with his demon realm. Why is it so slow? After feeling the speed at which the connection was forming, Baphomet started to doubt whether it is the same connection or not. Malfasa. He called out Malfasa who was here from the beginning. Hearing Baphomet, Malfasa came forward and stood behind him. You told Zagonath that the energy flow was very fast at the beginning he asked while keeping his eyes on the portal. Yes, at the beginning the energy flow was very fast, but then it stopped completely for some reason. Just when we were thinking everything returned to normal, the energy flow came back, but it was way slower than before Malfasa told Baphomet after hearing him. Hum, there is definitely something wrong here. Baphomet muttered to himself after hearing Malfasa. The energy flow was similar to the flow when he formed the connection with the demon realm. But even though the energy flow was similar, it was way slower than that. Plus, he can't believe on the fact that a sixth forbidden physique holder can appear out of nowhere. Should I ask about this to others? Baphomet thought while looking at the entrance of the shadow realm. Other monarch physique holders like Winterclaw have more knowledge than him, since they are alive for a very long time. He actually doesn't even know how old all of them are. Of course, being older than him doesn't mean they are stronger than him. Baphomet was sure that he can fight against any one of them with equal footing. Nah, I don't want to share the location of the Shadow Realm with anyone. I wouldn't even tell Winterclaw about it if not for the fact that I will need his help after the seal is broken. Baphomet shook his head and decided not to tell anyone about this. Because he is the master of the Demon Realm he can't enter into the realm of other monarchs. If he wants to enter in Shadow Realm, he will have to break his connection with the Demon Realm. But if he breaks his connection with the Demon Realm, he will lose the source of his demonic energy. Without demonic energy, his power will reduce compared to other monarchs. He can form the connection again with the Demon Realm. After exploring the Shadow Realm, but if other monarchs got the news that he broke his connection with the Demon Realm, and can't use demonic energy, they might try to do something, because it is not like they are on friendly terms with each other. Even though he wasn't sure what was happening with the Shadow Realm, he can't tell others about it, and let them know about its location that he found with so much effort. How is the breaking of the seal is going? He looked at Malfacer and asked. It is progressing well, we should be able to break it soon. Malfacer replied in a confident filled tone after hearing Baphomet. Good keep breaking the seal, don't worry about the energy flow, just keep an eye on it and tell me if something else happens. Baphomet said and started to walk away from there. As he walked away from there the open area disappeared, and the area filled with dense trees once again appeared. He came to the place where two demons were guarding the teleportation matrix, and activated it. The teleportation matrix lit up, and he once again appeared in the place from where he first used the teleportation matrix. Now, should I tell about this to Winterclaw since he already knew I have the location of the Shadow Realm, and in future when the seal will break, I will have to tell him the location of the Shadow Realm. Baphomet muttered to himself and came out from the teleportation matrix. Chapter 208 Anastasia was looking in front of her without blinking her eyes. In front of her, a giant black throne was emitting a black aura, which was giving a dreadful pressure. It was the core of the Shadow Realm. The throne of absolute shadow, an energy flow was coming out from the throne, and was going outside from the shadow realm, disappearing into void afterwards. It has been 10 days since the energy flow started to come out from the throne, and the connection between the throne and the shadow monarch core started to form. She was equally confused as Baphomet because of this strange situation. She was not confused because of the connection, because she already knew this will happen sooner or later. When she felt the usage of shadow energy some time ago, she already knew this will happen in the future. 
The reason for her confusion was the fact that the connection was forming very slowly. In the beginning, the connection was being formed at a rapid speed, and 50% of the connection was formed in just a minute. But after reaching 50%, the connection suddenly stopped forming, and when it started again it was very slow. According to what she knew, the connection with the monic core should have formed in just a few minutes. After forming the connection, the monic core should have received the blessing of the shadow realm, and its level should have increased by leaps and bounds. But nothing like this was happening. Everything was different from what she had anticipated. The connection was forming very slowly, and it was unknown what was the reason behind this. And the worst thing was that she can't do anything about it. She tried to move toward the throne. Even though her power was incomparable, she still felt a heavy pressure when she moved toward the throne. When she was just 50 meters away from the throne, the black aura around it became restless, and a wave of shadow energy came out from it pushing away Anastasia. Even using her full power she wasn't able to resist the pushing force, and was forced to move back. The wave of shadow energy pushed her 100 meters away from the throne, but didn't harm her. Anastasia looked at the throne, and a sigh escaped from her mouth. Even though I have partial authority over the shadow realm, I can't approach the throne and carefully examine the energy flow coming out from it. Anastasia muttered while looking at the throne. Before the connection started to form she could have easily approached the throne, but since the moment the connection started to form, she can't get close to it. She wasn't sure, but she can guess it was a protection mechanism, so that no one can interfere with the process of the connection. Well, since I can't do anything about it, let's just wait and see what will happen. Once the connection reaches at 100%, it is already at 75% and should be completed soon. Anastasia said and went towards a small throne which was some distance away from the original Shadow Throne. When she sat down on the throne and closed her eyes, she was able to sense everything related to the Shadow Realm. The seal won't last long, huh? After a moment of examination, she said and opened her eyes. She was already aware that some people is trying to break the seal. She can even monitor the situation outside, and already saw they were demons who were trying to break the seal. It has been a very long time since she last left the Shadow Realm, so she wasn't aware about the current condition of the outside world. She also noticed Malfasa who was the leader of the demons who were breaking the seal. But she wasn't worried about the fact that the seal will be broken soon. As long as it is not someone with a monarch core who came inside, she will be able to deal with him. Even the Malfacer was nothing in her eyes. She can feel he is powerful. Yes, powerful. But he is not a threat. Inside the Shadow Realm where she has partial control over it, and can even use shadow energy to some extent, she was confident that even five demons at the Malfacer level won't be able to fight against her. Even though I can deal with them, it will be troublesome if a large number of demons enter inside, since I won't be able to stop everyone alone. Anastasia muttered while rubbing her chin. Should I use the thing that Master gave me if a large number of demons enter inside? Anastasia closed her eyes once again, and through the throne, she focused on the ground all around the large black castle in which she was sitting. Her senses penetrated the ground, and she was able to see the view of the underground. Her senses moved tens of kilometers deep into the underground, and soon the image of a large open area which was located deep within the underground came into her view. The open area was hundreds of kilometers wide, and thousands of strange black ball size of an adult humans were floating there. The balls were pitch black, and what was inside them was unknown. Anastasia's spiritual sense passed over all the black balls like she was trying to find something. After a minute her spiritual sense stopped on one specific black ball. This black ball was similar to other black balls in the area, and there was nothing different about it. But when Anastasia's spiritual sense stopped on it, a crooked smile appeared on her face. That bastard Volta is in slumber inside it. Should I use the item that Master gave me? and throw him before those demons. With his power, it won't be difficult for him to deal with those demons. It will be even better if he kills all those demons, and gets himself destroyed as well, since I don't like how he always tries to act clingy with Master. Anastasia spoke some strange but dangerous words, while looking at the black ball with hostile eyes. Like feeling her hostile gaze the black ball even shook a little. When Anastasia saw the black ball was shaking her crooked smile became even wider. 
Don't worry even if you get destroyed, it is not like you will die. After all, you are already dead. Chapter 209 Clatter exclamation point exclamation point At an unknown location, inside a place which looks like a lab room, the sound of someone quickly pressing the keys on the keyboard rang out. A woman who looks to be in her mid-thirties, continues to press different keys, while keeping her eyes on the monitor. The woman had a beautiful gentle face, long black hair, amber-colored eyes and thin eyelashes. She was wearing a long white doctor's coat, and had a nonchalant expression on her face. Not far away from her, a male was chained inside a glass tube. The tube was filled with transparent white liquid that looks like normal water. Many small thin pipes were connected with the tube. The man inside the tube was unconscious, and an oxygen mask was put on his face. Besides the tube of the man, another tube was placed. Inside that tube a C-plus rank monster who looks like a fat beaver was laying unconscious. Tens of needles were connected with the body of the fat beaver, and those needles were interlocked with the thin pipes of the tube of the man. Alright, let's see if this will work. After some time the woman stopped what she was doing and said while looking at the glass tubes. She pressed enter command on the keyboard, and suddenly the needles connected with the beaver started to shake. The beaver who was unconscious a moment ago was jolted awake and squeaked out in pain. The beaver tried to break free from the needles, but was unable to break them. Soon the needles started to turn red as they started to fill with the blood essence of the beaver. As the needles absorbed the blood essence, the body of the fat beaver started to shrink. Through the needles, the blood essence went into the thin pipes that were connected with the second glass tube in which the unconscious man was chained. From the pipes, the blood essence was injected into the second tube. As the blood essence was injected into the glass tube, the transparent white liquid inside the tube started to turn purple in color. For the first few seconds nothing happened, but after around 30 seconds, when the transparent white liquid turned into pure purple, the body of the man started to shake. The woman was focusing on the computer screen, ignoring what was happening to the beaver and the man. Even with a high dose, he is about to wake up because of the pain. The woman muttered while rubbing her chin. Just as she finished speaking the eyes of the man who was unconscious all this time opened. A rug. His body started to shake violently. He wanted to scream, but was unable because of the oxygen mask and the liquid inside the tube. He tried to break the chain that was tying him, but the chains were too strong and he wasn't able to break them. Soon the body of the man started to swallow up like a balloon. A look of pure horror was visible on the face of the man as he continued to struggle, but was unable to break free. The woman looked at all this without any discomfort on her gentle-looking face. There was even a look of interest on her face. The body of the fat beaver turned into a dried husk, and the body of the man was swallowed up like a balloon. Bang! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! The body of the man wasn't able to endure for long, and soon exploded with a loud bang. The glass of the tube was dyed with purple-red liquid, and the chunks of the flesh. Huh, the success rate of imparting monsters' power to humans is awfully low. Seeing the man explode like a balloon the woman said with a sigh. There was no discomfort on her face seeing a person exploding like this is the most natural thing in the world. Amara, you are messing here again. Suddenly the door of the lab room opened and another woman entered inside the lab. The woman who entered looks in her mid-twenties and has silver color hair. She was wearing a normal t-shirt and shorts, exposing her long legs. Her skin was fair white and her green eyes were filled with dissatisfaction. What do you mean by messing here? I am clearly working here. Amara spoke while showing an innocent expression. Yes, working while exploding are people, Sarah said while rolling her eyes. Did not I tell you don't use our people for your experiments? If you want to do it, just go out and capture some people by yourself. I am only using trash people for my experiments. So you don't need to be so worked up. Amara said after hearing Sarah. By the way, when will the person you told me will come here? Amara quickly tried to change the subject when she saw a threatening look in Sarah's eyes. Layla is dealing with some matters related to her guild, and told me she will bring him over once she deals with everything. Isn't she captured him around 20 days ago? Why is it taking her such a long time? Hey! Why don't we also use her for one of my experiments when she came here? I need a high level hunter as a test subject. Amara suddenly asked while looking at Sarah with hopeful eyes. If you want to use her for an experiment go ahead and capture her by yourself. 
I don't have time to play around with you, Sarah said and started to walk away from there. I am not sure, but she should bring him over in the next five days or so. Don't try anything new and just use the previous method on him. If all the details I received about him are true, then there is a very high chance his physique is even more special than the Ice Reaper physique of Valerie. Seer said and left the lab. Even better than Ice Reaper physique, Haamaru muttered, and a smile appeared on her face. Chapter 210 So it's finally done, Layla said while looking at the message on her phone with a wide smile. She just received a message from the association informing her that her guild is now a gold rank guild. With this, now she will have more dungeons under her guild and her influence in Aquaville City will also increase. Now that the things with the Orc Den are finished, I have to bring him there. Layla muttered while rubbing her temples. She was tense because of what was happening with Evan. After delivering him food that day, she was busy with other things, so she didn't get the chance to visit him. Instead of her, one of her underlings was keeping an eye on him. That guy was also instructed to try different torture methods on him to break his mind. But the very next day she received a call from him saying something happened to Evan. When her underling went to look for him the next day, he found him unconscious in that room. He tried to wake him up, but no method work on him. One of her underlings who was a b rank healer also checked on him and tried to use all of his skills to wake him up. But even that guy wasn't able to find what was wrong with him. In the end, she instructed them to keep him in the medical capsule that can help people in recovery. She knew if Evan died she will be in trouble. If they personally ask me to capture him and bring him over they must need him for something that was Layla. S thought. If Evan died while being imprisoned by her, all the blame for his death will come on her. But she can't do anything about it because even a B rank healer wasn't able to heal him. There is no A rank healer in her guild, and it will be risky if she asks for other A rank healer who is not from her guild. I just have to make sure he doesn't die before I bring him over. Once I bring him there, it is none of my business whether he lives or dies. Layla thought and arrived before a room. She opened the door and went inside. In the room, a man was sitting on a chair while playing Super Zario on his phone. A capsule which was filled with green liquid was placed not far away from the man, and Evan was laying inside it with an oxygen mask on. How is he? Layla asked and went toward the capsule. The same as before the man replied without taking his eyes off from his phone screen. The name of the man was Droin. He was a B-plus rank hunter, and the person who discovered the unconscious Evan. When Lael came before the capsule and looked at Evan, she noticed his face was pale. Even though he was inside the medical capsule, and a painful expression was appearing on his face from time to time. What the hell is wrong with him? Lael thought with a frown on her face. Did he try to do something stupid after knowing he can't escape from here, and received a backlash as a result? Lael thought to herself and opened the medical capsule. She used her spiritual sense to investigate his body. Even though the healer who checked Evan told her that nothing was wrong with his body, other than his mana being very chaotic, she still decided to take a look herself. That healer was B rank, and he can't use spiritual sense, only A rank hunters can use spiritual sense. She closed her eyes and activated her spiritual sense. An invisible wave left her body and went towards Evan. The wave covered his entire body and Lael was able to see that there was nothing wrong with his body from the outside. When she saw there was nothing wrong outside she decided to take a look from inside. Let's see just how much chaotic his mana is. Lael thought and tried to see his body from the inside. But just as her spiritual sense enter inside his body, something that she didn't expect happened. Just as her spiritual sense enter into his body, she saw a black energy come rushing towards her. Layla felt all hairs on her body stand up, and she tried to retrieve her spiritual sense, but it was already too late. The black energy instantly destroyed her spiritual sense, and Layla's mind went black. Thud dash. Droin who was playing the game on his phone, was startled when he heard the sound of something dropping. Ha! Huh, he looked towards the capsule and was stunned when he saw Layla laying unconscious on the floor. Boss. Droin quickly stood up and went towards her. He first checked her and was relieved to see she was alive. What happened to her? Droin muttered and looked at Evan with a frown on his face. After starting at Evan for some time, like he received enlightenment and understanding look appeared on his face. 
Seriously, Droin shook his head while showing a strange smile. Layla woke up after around one hour and saw Droin who was sitting not far away from her still playing the game. Her mind was dizzy and there was a confused look on her face. When Droin noticed she woke up he stood up and went towards her. Boss, are you alright? He asked Lael while showing a strange smile. Seriously, even though you were using your spiritual sense and saw his thing, there is no need for you to faint, just because it was bigger than average. At first, she did not understand what he was saying because her mind was dizzy. But when she finally understood what he was saying black lines appeared on her forehead. Durin suddenly felt the temperature of the room drop. The next second, the wall of the room was broken and Doran was sent flying out of the room. After sending Droin flying out, she took a deep breath and checked her body. Sure enough, after a moment she muttered while looking at Evan. Her soul was damaged because of how her spiritual sense was destroyed earlier by the black energy. Because of receiving the damage to her soul, she passed out earlier. The damage on the soul is very hard to heal. And if your soul is damaged your power will also decrease. Just what the hell was that? Lael thought not understanding what was the energy that destroyed her spiritual sense. I don't know what the fu asterisk k is wrong with this bastard. But I can't keep him here any longer. If something happened to him I will be in trouble. Lael said to herself and decided to leave Aquaville City the next day. Chapter 211. A place that looks like a village was burning in fire. Large flames rose into the sky like flaming tornadoes as people ran for their lives. Run, the demon is here. People were screaming with a face full of horror. And were running like headless chickens. Arg, a man who looks to be in his mid-twenties, suddenly fall down while running. He tried to stand up and ran away from there, but suddenly a cage of fire surrounded him stopping him from running away. Do you think you can run away from me, the great demon king? A young man slowly walked out from the burning fire and went toward the fire cage in which the man was trapped. Seeing the young man a panicked expression appear on the man's face. The young man had black hair, black eyes and a handsome face. He was wearing silver color armor and tens of fireballs were circling around him like obedient kittens. The young man's handsome face resembled to a certain individual who was hovering high in the sky and watching this high-end drama with a dead face. M-O-T-H-E-R-F asterisk her. Don't say those embarrassing lines when you have a face similar to mine. Evan can't help but curse out loud seeing how a person who looks like him was calling himself a great demon lord and was laughing with a cringe expression on his face. I hope this scene will not be very long. Evan muttering continued to look at how the man who looks similar to him was killing people like a psychopath. After a long time, the man who looks similar to him suddenly dropped to the ground. Finally Evan who was watching this from the sky, sighed in relief when he saw his twin brother drop to the ground. The next second the body of the man who looks similar to him started to disappear and turn into a golden light. That golden light came flying toward him and was absorbed by him. Just as he absorbed the golden light he felt a terrible headache. But now Evan was used to it. It was not the first time something like this was happening. While feeling the headache Evan saw the scene in front of him started to disappear. C-H-R-I-P asterisk, C-H-R-I-P asterisk. From a burning village, Evan suddenly found himself on a mountain. The mountain was filled with green trees, and birds were chirping happily all around the surrounding. The atmosphere of the mountain was very peaceful, and the cool wind was flowing, bringing the freshness of the mountain along with it. This time a peaceful environment, huh? Evan muttered not surprised by the change in his surroundings. After passing out in the room because of the nasty headache, he found himself in this strange place. From time to time different kind of scenes just like the last one was being played in front of him. He even lost count of just how many scenes he has watched till now. 100, 200, 500, he wasn't sure. Every scene was different from the other one, and the only common thing in those scenes was the fact that he saw a person similar to him in all of those scenes. If in one scene he was a stupid demon king who was suffering from the 8th grade syndrome, then in a scene he was a hero with a hero complex. In one of the scenes, he was even the king of a kingdom. He wanted to watch that scene for a little longer, but it also didn't last long like other scenes. Of course, the reason he wanted to see that scene was because he wanted to learn how to manage a kingdom properly. 
He didn't want to look at that scene for long, because he was interested in knowing whether the king who looks similar to him had a harem or not. He is not that kind of person. He was genuinely interested in learning how to manage a kingdom, but alas before he can learn properly the scene changed, and a different scene was shown to him. He doesn't know how much time passed since the moment he started to see all these scenes. He felt like tens of years passed by since the moment he started to watch those scenes. He looked around the mountain to search for his twin brother, since in every scene, he found one guy similar to him. And, just as he accepted, when he looked around him he saw his twin brother sitting cross leg with his eyes closed. This twin brother was wearing a kasaya, his head was completely shaved, and there was a peaceful expression on his face. So now I am a Buddhist monk, huh? Evan muttered while you're not even surprised by seeing his bald self. Well, if I have to choose one look for myself, I will definitely go with that punk style, where I was beating the sh asterisk t out of those students and robbing their pocket money. Evan said with a strange smile on his face. In one of the scenes, he was a school bully who beat his schoolmates and demand the legendary protection money from them. Maybe it was because he was bullied by Mike and others in the past, and that is why he felt quite elated while robbing his schoolmates. But still, just what the hell is going on here? And when will this end? Evan said while looking at the sitting monk. It has been a very long for him since he started to see these scenes. At first, he thought this will not last long, and he will wake up soon. But now he doesn't even know just how many scenes he already watched and he still doesn't have a clue how long it will last. Don't tell me I'm stuck here for the rest of my life. Evan thought while rubbing his head. Suddenly he saw his monk self drop to the ground. Evan's mouth can't help but twitch when he saw him laying face first with a shining forehead. Just like always the monk Evan turned into golden light, and that golden light rushed towards him. The light went inside his body, and he felt the familiar headache again. What kind of scene will appear now? Evan muttered while shaking his head. He stood there for quite some time waiting for the next scene to play. But nothing happened even after a long time. What is happening now? Evan asked himself with a frown on his face when nothing happened. Suddenly Evan felt a strange feeling coming from his chest. He placed his hand on his chest trying to understand what was happening. This... Evan wasn't able to finish what he was saying when he felt a terrible pain rise from his chest. Ugh. Evan screamed out loud and dropped to the ground while holding his chest. The pain did not come from his heart, where his monarch call was located. Instead, it was coming from his prime call. Now what is wrong with my prime call? Evan thought before his vision turned black and the surrounding area around him started to collapse. Chapter 212 Layla drove her car towards the airport of Aquaville City. Evan was laying unconscious in the back seat of the car. At first, she was thinking about bringing Evan there a few days later. But after what happened last night she can't wait any longer to get rid of him. Her soul was still damaged. And it will take quite some time before it heals, if she doesn't find a potion to heal it. I should ask for compensation from Sarah, since my soul was damaged while completing her task. Lael thought and directly enter the runway of the airport through the special gate. After coming to the runway, she drove towards a jet. The jet was not big, it was around 15 meters in size, but its speed was faster than the airplane from which Evan came. When she reached at the jet, she used her mana to carry Evan inside it. A pilot, who was also a member of the Dark Guild, was already present there. His level was just E plus rank. She used her mana to bring Evan inside the jet. She didn't speak to the pilot, and just took out a medical capsule from her storage ring. After tossing Evan inside the capsule, she walked away from him and sat on one of the seats. After Layla sat down the pilot started the jet and took off into the sky. While the jet was flying the connection between Evan's monarch core and shadow realm was still forming. It has been 20 days since Evan fainted, and the connection started to form. Currently, the connection was at 99% and was just a step away from completion. The strange energy that left after scanning Evan's soul was still coming back from time to time. Each time that energy came back Evan showed a painful expression on his face. The monarch core which was half solid and half liquid before he fainted now once again turned solid. Only a very small portion of it was still in liquid form which was also turning solid. 
Once the connection reaches at 100%, that portion will also turn solid. Now that the connection reached at 99%, small energy fluctuations were coming out from his body from time to time. Lael also noticed those energy fluctuations earlier, while bringing him here. Honestly, she was quite nervous, because those energy fluctuations were giving her a dreadful feeling. Whenever those energy fluctuations came out, she felt her body freezing just like what happened when the dark energy destroyed her spiritual senses. She tried to ignore this feeling and closed her eyes trying to take a nap before she reached there. He is just a D-plus rank hunter even if he is up to something I can always escape from here. Lael thought and completely ignored those energy fluctuations. After a few minutes, another part of the energy which left Evan's body came back. Just as that part entered his body, the connection between his core and the shadow realm reached 100%, and his core once again turned completely solid. Just as his core once again turned solid, a mark started to appear at his glabella. The mark was completely pitch black in color, and looks like a drop of water. If Evan was awake and saw this mark he would have recognized it, because the one unit of shadow energy that always rotates around his monarch core, also looks similar to the mark which appears on his glabella. At first, the mark was very faint, but as time passes it was becoming darker. After some time when the mark was completely formed the monarch core inside Evan's heart started to shake. Suddenly like a dam was broken, a large amount of shadow energy came into his body through the connection which was just formed. Evan's monarch core started to rotate at a speed like never before. There was so much shadow energy that Lael who just closed her eyes a moment ago, shuddered because of the terrifying pressure that Evan's body was releasing. She opened her eyes and looked in his direction with shocked filled eyes. She tried to stand up, but found her legs were shaking. W what is happening? Layla said in a stuttering tone, and tried to use mana to control her body. But even after using mana, she found she can't stop her body from shaking. Evan's monarch core rotated like a fan, and started to absorb the shadow energy which came through his connection. As it started to absorb shadow energy the level of his monarch core started to increase. It instantly reached at the C rank, and tens of notifications started to appear before Evan. But since he was still unconscious, he wasn't able to see them. But even after his monarch core reached at C rank the flow of shadow energy didn't stop. His monarch core continues to absorb shadow energy, and its level kept increasing. With each passing second the level of his monarch core was increasing. In just a few seconds it was almost at the peak of C rank, and was on the verge of breaking through the B rank. But things were not so simple. Because the connection was successfully formed, his monarch core received the blessings of the shadow realm. The energy, which was coming through the connection was enough to increase his monarch core rank to peak of B rank. But as the level of his monarch core increased, the pressure it was putting on his D plus prime core also started to increase. His prime core was fine till his monarch core broke through the C rank. But when its rank continued to increase even after reaching C rank, cracks started to appear on his prime core. These cracks were worse than the cracks that appear in the Shadow Kingdom dungeon. Even before his monarch core reached at the peak of C rank, his prime core was filled with tens of cracks. Those cracks widened even more when his monarch core reached at the peak of C rank, and was about to break through to B rank. Chapter 213 In the Shadow Kingdom dungeon, after advancing his monarch core to D rank, Evan wasn't able to increase its rank at that time. When he tried to increase the rank of his monarch core at that time, it did not absorb the energy of the core, because if its rank had increased at that time, his prime core which was just F rank, would have shattered because of its pressure. Currently, the situation was the same at that time. Because of forming a connection with the Shadow Realm, and receiving its blessing, Evan's monarch core level was increasing at a rapid speed. Because its level was increasing, his D plus rank prime core was not able to handle the pressure released by it. It was the first time in history something like this was happening. Anything like this never happened before because of one simple reason. No one among forbidden physique holders ever had a second core other than their monarch core. All the people who had forbidden physique were born with it. So from the moment they were born, they already had monarch core in their heart. Because they were born with a monarch core they didn't have a second core. But Evan's condition is completely different. He was born with shadow physique, not with shadow monarch physique. So he had a prime core when he was born. He received his shadow monarch physique when he awakened his skill shadow walk. 
The problem where he was only able to absorb shadow calls was also caused by the fact that he had two physiques. But that problem disappeared after he lost his shadow physique in the Shadow Kingdom dungeon. After losing his shadow physique, when he only had shadow monarch physique, he finally got his monarch core. Evan's body started to shake, and an expression of pain was visible on his face. His prime core was currently filled with cracks and was breaking apart. As his monarch core was absorbing shadow energy, the pressure on his prime core was also increasing. The energy fluctuations coming out from his body also increased. Suddenly Lael remembered about the PLF of the jet and looked towards the cockpit. Even an A-rank hunter like her felt such great pressure from those energy fluctuations, and the pilot of the jet was just an E-plus rank hunter. With shaky legs, Layla moved towards the cockpit. When she arrived there she was stunned to see the pilot already passed out, and blood was coming out from his mouth. She checked his pulse and was even more shocked because he was already dead. She looked at the control screen of the jet and saw the words, Auto Pilot Mode. The only reason the jet didn't crash till now was because, before passing out the pilot activated autopilot mode. Seeing the passed out pilot, and the strange situation with Evan Layla's mind was in chaos. She didn't know what to do. If she wants, she can easily jump down from the jet. She is an A-rank hunter and can use fly to safely escape from here. But the problem was Evan who was causing all this rucks. She wasn't sure what she should do with him. If she left him here and something happened to him, she don't know what Sarah will do with her. Moreover, she doesn't have much time to make a decision. There is no set destination for the jet. And it was just flying like a headless chicken in autopilot mode. Currently, she wasn't far away from the Aquaville city. And can return there easily. But if she doesn't make a decision and went deeper into the wilderness. It will be dangerous even for her. She looked at Evan one last time and finally made up her mind. There was no way she can bring Evan with her. When his body is releasing such strong energy fluctuations. She will lose control over her mana. And it will be dangerous for her when her soul is already damaged. If she brings him with her. Slowly Layla started to walk toward the door of the jet. While Lyala was thinking all of this, a change also occurred with Evan's monarch core. When his monarch core reached at the peak of C rank, and his prime core was on the verge of breaking, his monarch core stopped absorbing shadow energy. Even though Evan's monarch core stopped absorbing shadow energy when his prime core was about to break, the shadow energy which was coming through the connection didn't stop. The shadow energy started to flood his body. Evan's body started to swallow up like a balloon, because of the excess shadow energy. When it seems like Evan's body will burst like a balloon, his monarch core which stopped absorbing shadow energy once again started to absorb it. But this time when his core absorbed the energy its level did not increase, and it stayed at the peak of rank C. As his monarch core absorbed the excess shadow energy, Evan's swallowed up body started to return to normal. Inside his monarch core, the shadow energy started to gather in liquid form. His monarch core, which was only the size of a rice grain, continued to absorb all the shadow energy which was flooding his body. But it also did not last long, because the amount of shadow energy which was coming through the connection was too much. Crack. Suddenly a small crack also appeared on his monarch core. Ugh. Evan who was unconscious, was jolted awake and screamed out loud, when a small crack appeared on his monarch core. Just as Evan was jolted awake a burst of shadow energy came out from his body. Layla, who just reached the door of the jet, felt all hairs on her body stand up to no end. Without thinking anything she jumped down from the jet and created a shield around her. Boom dash. Just as Layla jumped down from the jet, it exploded in midair. Ugh. Lael's shield was destroyed and she was blown away by the shockwave. With difficulty, she stabilized herself in mid-air and looked at the place where the jet just exploded. Is he dead? Lael muttered thinking Evan died in that explosion just now. But the next second she felt a chill run down her spine and a terrifying aura engulfed the entire surroundings. Chapter 214 Ugh. Evan woke up feeling his heart is about to burst apart because of the small crack which appeared on his monarch core. When he woke up, the shadow energy which was flooding his body, burst forth from his body engulfing the entire jet in an instant. Boom dash. The jet engine wasn't able to handle the destructive power of the shadow energy, and exploded upon coming in contact with it. The shockwaves, fire and rubble of the jet, everything that went toward Evan, was blocked by the shadow energy coming out from his body. 
He was feeling his body will explode because of the excess energy. Even though he just woke up and didn't know what was going on, he instantly understood that if he doesn't want to explode, he has to release all the excess energy from his body. He can feel that even though his body was already full from the shadow energy, more energy was coming through the connection which is now completely formed. But before he can think how to release all the energy he started to fall down from the sky. F U asterisk K Evan can. T help but curse not understanding how he appear high in the sky. Just as he started to fall down his mind reacted before his body. Whoosh exclamation point. A pair of two black wings suddenly appeared behind his back. Both wings looks like the wings of an eagle and were big enough to cover his entire body if he fold himself like a ball. Just as those wings came out, the shadow energy which was coming out from his body stopped along with the energy fluctuations. But even though those energy fluctuations stopped, an even more terrifying aura spread in all surroundings when those black wings came out. Evan was stunned for a moment. But then the details of shadow wing skill which he unlocked after his monarch core reached at C rank appear in his mind. He wanted to take a closer look at his status window after reaching C rank, but he knew it is not the right time. Moreover, because of the shadow wings he also understood how to get rid of the excess shadow energy from his body. Before he only had one unit of shadow energy. He always used that one unit of shadow energy like mana reinforcement to increase his physical capabilities for one or two seconds. He tried to use that one unit of shadow energy to cast his skills. But it didn't work in past, maybe because one unit was not enough. But currently, Evan has so much shadow energy that he can't even imagine. And the shadow wings behind his back were also cast using shadow energy instead of mana. Which is why the aura they were releasing was so terrifying. Evan can feel his monarch core was at its limit. And even though his shadow wings were consuming the excess energy, it was not enough. He doesn't know what kind of skills he awakened after reaching C rank. And he also doesn't have time to look at his status window, since his core was at its limit. But he didn't care about that because he already knew which skill will help him in this situation. After feeling that terrifying aura Lael gather all of her energy and flew away from there. Her heart was thumping loudly, and fear like never before engulfed her body. What was that monster? Lael flew away trying to increase her speed as much as possible. When the jet exploded earlier she thought Evan died in that explosion. But then she felt a terrifying aura and noticed Evan in the cloud of black smoke. When she looked at him she saw his eyes were pitch black like an abyss. There were two black wings behind his back. And some strange black tendrils were coming out from his body from time to time. Seeing him all of her instincts told her just one thing. Run. And she exactly did that. After seeing Evan she didn't waste any time and used all of her might to run away from there. I am in this mess because of that bi asterisk ch Sarah. If not for her, I would have currently sleeping peacefully on my bed. Layla cursed while looking behind her back from time to time. When she didn't see Evan chasing her she sighed in relief. In just a few seconds she ran away more than 5 kilometers away from Evan's location. But suddenly she felt the wind around her was flowing oddly. Without stopping she looked around her and found it was not just around her. The wind in the tens of kilometers of the area was behaving oddly. Seeing what was happening Layla felt a dreadful feeling rising in her heart. Rumble dash. Suddenly the sky started to rumble. Layla stopped flying and looked around her surroundings warily. The atmosphere in the surrounding became heavy. Her forehead was drenched in cold sweat. And for some reason, she was feeling something bad is about to happen. Boom dash. Layla quickly looked in her right direction from where she just heard a booming sound. And her eyes trembled because of fear. There was a mountain peak around 3 kilometers away from her in that direction a moment ago. But now that mountain peak disappear. Instead of the mountain peak, a giant black tornado which was more than 100 meters in diameter and thousands of meters high appeared there. The height of the tornado was so high that it looks like it descend directly from the heavens. Even though she was around 3 kilometers away from the tornado and was using mana, she still felt her body being dragged towards the tornado because of the pulling force. Boom dash, boom dash, boom dash. But it was just the beginning as more black tornadoes started to descend from the sky. The ground where tornadoes descend was split open as deep crevices formed there. Trees were uprooted and stones turned into dust after being pulled inside by them. In just a few seconds tens of black tornadoes descend from the sky, 
covering a wide range of that area. Lael looked around her with fear-filled eyes, as now she was surrounded by black tornadoes from all sides. Just what the hell is going on? She used all of her mana to resist the pulling force coming from those tornadoes. She doesn't even want to think what will happen if she was pulled inside by those tornadoes. Even a mountain peak disappeared in an instant upon coming in contact with one of the tornadoes. Seeing the situation around her Lael instantly made her mind. There was no way for her to escape while being surrounded by those tornadoes. She turned around and started to fly back towards the direction from where she came from. There was a high chance that Evan will kill her if she goes back there. But if she doesn't go there, she was sure that she will die if she got caught by one of the tornadoes. Chapter 215 Evan continues to use wind manipulation as powerful tornadoes descend from the sky one after another. Previously, when he received the wind manipulation skill, he used it at its full power, almost depleting all of his mana. But even then he was only able to control the wind in around 200 meters of area. But now that he activated wind manipulation using shadow energy, he was easily able to control the wind in tens of kilometers of area. The power of these tornadoes is off the charts. Evan mumbled to himself seeing the destruction those tornadoes were causing. The ground was splitting apart as trees and stones were being pulled inside the tornadoes. The tornadoes were like a monster of the abyss who was destroying everything that came into its path. A tornado directly descends on a stone mountain cliff, destroying it like it was made of paper. Evan focused on the shadow energy which was flooding his body, and noticed now it started to calm down a little. But even now the rate at which shadow energy was coming through the connection was higher than its consumption. Evan focused even more, and the range of wind manipulation increased to the maximum, reaching more than 30 kilometers of area. In the 30 kilometers of area, tens of black tornadoes started to descend from the sky. Evan was surprised himself because he wasn't feeling any burden on his body, even though he was using shadow energy to its maximum limit. Raw exclamation point, raw exclamation point. He can hear roars of terrified monsters coming from all over the places. Hearing those roars Evan suddenly thought about his current location. Just where in the seven hell I am. Evan muttered while looking around. He remembered being passed out in the small white room. But now that he woke up he found himself in this completely unfamiliar place. It will be dangerous for me once I used up all the excess shadow energy. Evan thought because he will not be able to fight against powerful monsters. Once he used the excess shadow energy. Which direction should I move? Evan looked around wanting to find something that can help him go back to the Aquaville city. Suddenly he saw someone flying towards him. When he focused he was surprised to see it was a haggard figure of Lael. She was bleeding from many places, and the armor she was wearing was tattered from all over. Seeing her he remembered all the things that happened with him because of her. Being abducted to staying in that torture room, he remembered everything in an instant. He felt his anger rising just seeing her. She was around 300 meters away from him. There was no tornado or pulling force in the 500 meters area around Evan, since he was controlling those tornadoes. He can see that she barely escaped from the tornadoes. But Evan said and flapped his black wings. Swish exclamation point exclamation point. There is no way you are going to survive. Since he was using shadow energy to use his wings his speed was too fast. Even though Lael was an A-rank hunter, she wasn't even able to see what happened before Evan appeared before her. Evan was angry, but he doesn't want to kill her before knowing his current location, so he didn't use too much force and bonked down on her head, like he was punishing a child. But the result of that bonk was nothing but light. Crack. The sound of bone cracking rang out, and Lael was sent flying towards the ground like a meteorite. Boom dash. She crashed on the ground, creating a large crater in the process, as rubbles of destroyed ground flew everywhere. Evan was shocked speechless, seeing the result of his light bonking. He knew his strength was currently very high, because of the shadow energy which was flooding his body, which is why he just used around 60% of his strength earlier. But he never expected that with just 60% something like this will happen. Actually, if Lael was in her top condition, she might be able to react somehow and neglect some of the impact of that attack. But she lost most of her mana escaping from those tornadoes. Plus she was severely injured during this process. And like it was not enough even her soul was damaged, decreasing her power even more. 
Her vitality was very low after escaping from those powerful tornadoes. It would be a miracle if she was still alive after receiving that attack from Evan. Her skull was cracked open because of his punch, she was bleeding from her mouth, ear, nose, and her body was in a complete mess after being crashed against the ground. Evan gulped down and looked at Lael who stayed motionless after crashing on the ground. He didn't care if Lael live or die, but he still need to know where he is. If she dies, and he doesn't know in which direction he should go to reach Aquaville City, he will be in huge trouble once his shadow energy runs out. Evan came down from the sky hoping she is still alive. He landed near her and checked her condition. And just as he expected the miracle did not happen. Her heart already stopped beating. And she died without even understanding what kind of monster booked her. Evan looked at her dead body with a dazed look wondering if he should be happy or sad. Because he killed her. He still wanted to know where he was, and in which direction Aquaville City is located. Me and my rotten luck Evan can. T help but say to himself after seeing what just happened. Raw dash, raw dash. Suddenly Evan heard the sound of some monsters who were somehow able to escape from the area of tornadoes. He narrowed his eyes and looked in the direction the sounds were coming from. Let's deal with them and move in a random direction before I stopped receiving energy from the connection. Evan thought and was about to leave from there when a notification appeared before him. Do you want to use Skill Shadow Resurrection? Chapter 216 Do you want to use Skill Shadow Resurrection? Evan was baffled when he read the notification that appeared before him. Shadow Resurrection Is it one of the skills I got after reaching C rank? Evan thought while raising an eyebrow. Did I get a class like a shadow priest or shadow saint? Evan can. T help but think after seeing the word resurrection in the name of the skill. In the games he played in his past life, generally, only people with classes like the high priest or saintess class can use resurrection magic to revive people. He looked around and saw monsters who escaped from the tornadoes were still a little far away from him. Let's try this skill first. Evan thought and decided to use this skill first before dealing with monsters. He was hoping that this skill will revive Lael, and he will be able to get information about his location from her. Of course, even if she was revived by him, he has no plan of keeping her alive. Once he gets the information about his location he will once again bonk her to death. When Evan used the Shadow Resurrection skill, Shadow Energy came out from his Monarch Core and covered the dead body of Layla. Evan watched with a face full of interest as the shadow energy seeped inside Layla's body. After the shadow energy seeped inside her, her body started to shake. Evan furrowed his eyebrow when he noticed something was coming out from her body. He took a step back when he saw a ghost-like black shadow coming out from her body. What the f u asterisk k is this? Evan screamed inside his mind seeing a ghost-like shadow who looks similar to Layla come out from her body. The only difference was that, unlike the real Layla, the shadow was black in color, and her eyes looks like they were burning with purple flames. What kind of dark resurrection magic is this? Evan can. T help but think after seeing the shadow. He looked at the body of Layla and saw it stopped shaking, and there was no sign of revival on her actual body. After coming out from Layla's body the shadow looked at Evan. Evan raised his guard because he can feel the shadow in front of him also has the power of a rank hunter, just like Layla. Just when he was ready to fight he was baffled when the shadow kneeled in front of him. What is going on here? Evan was about to open his status window to see complete details of his skill, when he sensed a B plus rank monster who was coming in his direction. When Evan looked behind him he saw a monster who looks like a hippopotamus, and was covered in dark pink scales all over its body. Earlier Evan retreated his wings after landing on the ground, so that his excess energy will last a little longer. Since he retreated his wings, the terrifying aura which was coming out from them also disappeared. Which is why the B-plus rank monster was able to approach him. G-R-R-R. -R -R. The hippopotamus was around 150 meters away from him, and it growled after seeing him. Evan was about to unfold his shadow wings once again, so that it will run away from here, after feeling that terrifying aura. Currently, he just wanted to see the details of his skill and fully understand what was going on here. But before he can unfold his wings the shadow of Lael who was kneeling before him moved. How dare you growl before my master, you filthy monster. The shadow spoke in a voice similar to that of Layla, which was filled with rage. 
A black aura came out from the shadow's body going towards the hippopotamus. The speed of the black aura was very fast, and it arrived before the hippopotamus in an instant. When the monster came into contact with the black aura, its body stiffened, and its eyes turned dazed like it was in some kind of dream. The shadow of Layla appeared before the hippopotamus. Her hands suddenly changed shape and turned into the claw of a beast which easily pierced through its hard skin, reaching to its brain, and destroying it in an instant. Thud dash. With a thumping sound, the body of the B-plus rank monster dropped to the ground as blood flowed out from the large wound on its head. Evan watched everything with his eyes wide open looking back and forth at the shadow and the dead monster. It can even speak. Evan thought while looking at the shadow with shocked filled eyes, because he never thought this shadow can even speak. Wait, did this shadow just call me master? Evan muttered and looked at Layla's shadow who came back and was standing a little distance away from him. Evan thought about asking her what is she, but suddenly his face changed. The energy which was coming through the connection started to decrease, and it won't be long before it will completely stop. Before it completely stops he wanted to leave from here. Do you know which direction Aquaville City is located? Evan asked while looking at the shadow of Layla, hoping he will get some information from her. The Aquaville City is in that direction, Master. Shadow Layla quickly answered him while pointing in the right direction. For some reason, Evan felt she sounded quite happy when he talked to her. But currently, he doesn't have time to think about anything else. Before leaving he wanted to kill the monsters who appear here. It was a big chance for him to collect some high level cores. He looked at the Shadow Layla and thought about something. Can you go there and kill all the monsters who came here after escaping from the tornadoes? He asked while pointing in the direction from where he can feel the aura of some B plus rank monsters. He was hoping she will help him, so that he will be able to get more cores before leaving. Of course, leave it to me. I will definitely kill all the monsters there Shadow Layla said in an enthusiastic voice after hearing Evan, and was about to dash away when Evan spoke once again. Don't forget to collect the cores after killing the monsters. Alright Shadow Layla said and dashed away from there. Just what the hell is she? She was speaking just like a normal person. Evan muttered to himself still not believing he was just talking to a ghost. But he soon stopped thinking about it, and looked at the body of the hippopotamus. That Shadow Layla killed earlier. Chapter 217 Evan looked for the core in the body of the hippopotamus, but did not find anything. After not finding the core he used his Shadow Resurrection skill on it. Shadow energy came out from his monarch core and covered the body of the hippopotamus. After covering its body the energy seeped inside it. Evan noticed this time less Shadow energy was consumed when he used Shadow Resurrection. Maybe because it is a B plus rank while Lael was an A rank. Evan thought when he saw this time less shadow energy was consumed. But soon Evan saw the body of the hippopotamus was tearing apart, and blood started to come out from all over its body. He raised an eyebrow and stepped away from it. After a few seconds, the shadow energy which seeped inside the body of the hippopotamus completely disappeared, and a notification appeared before him. Shadow resurrection failed. What does it mean? Evan looked at the notifications with a frown on his face. The body of the hippopotamus was badly damaged. Unlike Layla's body which didn't change even after he used his skill on it, the body of the hippopotamus looks like it will be destroyed any moment. Damn it I don't have much time Evan once again used Shadow Resurrection skill on the hippopotamus, noticing he does. T have much time. He can feel the shadow energy which was coming through the connection was decreasing. He still wanted to hunt those monsters who came here so that he can get some high rank or before leaving from here. Once again the body of the hippopotamus was covered in shadow energy, and just like last time it seeped inside its body. Soon Evan noticed a black shadow coming out from the body of the hippopotamus, and this time the body stayed the same and wasn't damaged at all. Looks like the chances of shadow resurrection working is not 100%, and if it fails the body of the target will be damaged as a result. Evan concluded seeing a shadow which looks similar to the hippopotamus monster come out and lowered its head before him. Evan's lips arched upward when he saw this. Go in that direction and kill any monster you see. Evan pointed in the different direction where Shadow Layla went earlier and said to Shadow Hippo. Gra. Shadow Hippo acknowledged his order and dashed in that direction. This skill is in a completely different league from all the skills I have seen till now Evan said to himself. Seeing the result of his Shadow Resurrection skill, 
He used shadow wing skill and flew in a different direction. He felt the aura of someone who was stronger than Layla from this direction. If it was normal time, he would have run away from here. The moment he sensed this aura, because it was definitely someone who is at least A plus rank. But currently, since he has a large amount of shadow energy, he wasn't afraid of even an A plus rank monster. Moreover, after killing it, I can use shadow resurrection on it. Evan thought and arrived at the place from where he felt the powerful aura earlier. When he reached there he instantly noticed an 8 meters tall bear, who was bleeding from some places. The bear was covered in silver metallic fur, its eyes were deep yellow, and a powerful aura was coming out from its body. Looks like it was injured while escaping from the tornadoes. Evan thought when he saw the bear was bleeding from some places. Since those tornadoes can even injure an A plus rank monster, doesn't it mean its attack power reached at least S rank? Evan thought and took a deep breath. His prime core is still D plus rank. If he tells someone that he unleashed an attack with the power of S rank, while being only D plus rank, no one will believe him. Raw exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point. The bear noticed Evan because of the powerful aura his wings were releasing, and roared while looking at him warily. The bear didn't attack on him immediately, because it can feel a lethal threat from him. But Evan didn't care about it, since he was in a hurry. He dived down towards the bear from the sky. Roar dash. Seeing Evan was coming toward it, the bear roared out loud, and its silver metallic fur lit up. A powerful aura came out from its body. The ground around it started to tremble, and the air became heavy. Even when the bear released the full aura of an a plus rank monster, Evan did not feel anything because of the shadow energy which was flooding his body. The bear swept its claw towards Evan who was driving towards it. Rumble dash. The sharp claw of the bear cut the surrounding air, and the ground started to shake because of the sheer force behind the claw. Even though he was still a little far away, Evan can feel the power behind the claw. But even after feeling the power of the bear's attack, he did not stop. Five black bullets were forming at each finger of his right hand. He appeared before the bear, its claw was just a meter away from his face. He can feel the sharp wind passing by touching his face. Just from the power of the shockwave, he was sure that if shadow energy was not protecting him, his body would have disappeared from existence even before the bear's claw landed on him. Ice chains. Whoosh dash. Just when the claw of the bear was about to touch Evan's face, two black chains which were releasing a menacing aura came out from the ground, stopping its claw just a few centimeters away from his face. Some small cuts appeared on Evan's face because of sharp shock waves created by the bear's attack, but his face did not change. Bang, Evan said while pointing all five fingers of his right hand at the bear. Swish dash. All five shadow bullets which were forming on his fingers, shot forward at the same time. The bullet created by the shadow energy was so powerful that when they moved forward the space was ripped apart, and some small space fishes appeared there, which were instantly healed by the world mana. Poochie dash. In front of shadow bullets, the defense of the bear was useless, as two bullets pierced both of its eyes, while the other three struck right at its glabella one after another, making a hole at the center of its forehead and destroying its brain. Thud dash. With a face full of disbelief the giant body of the bear dropped to the ground motionless as its life force slowly faded away. I thought shadow bullets will not be able to pierce its defense, which is why I first targeted its eyes. What a waste of shadow energy. Evan muttered because he did not expect that with just three bullets, he will be able to kill the bear. He looked at the 8 meters big giant body of the bear, and quickly started to search for the core. Chapter 218 Evan flew back in the direction of the shadow hippo, with a face full of disgust. His body was completely covered in blood, and some small chunks of flesh were visible in his hair. From the pale look of his facial skin, it was clear that he just puked not long ago. I should have known something like this might happen, after seeing the result of the failed shadow resurrection on that hippopotamus. Evan thought while trying to not puke again. Earlier after killing the A-plus rank bear, he used the shadow resurrection skill on it. But the shadow resurrection failed for the first two times, and the body of the bear was badly damaged in the process. He was hesitant, but he still used the shadow resurrection for the third time on the damaged body. But it failed once again. When the shadow resurrection failed for the third time, the bear's body exploded like a balloon sending blood, its internal organs and chunks of flesh flying everywhere. 
He was standing very close to the body of the bear, and was not prepared for the sudden explosion. He was not able to defend himself on time, and his body was bathed in the blood and the chunks of bear's flesh. Feeling his body being covered in blood and flesh a sick feeling engulfed him, and his stomach churned. Soon all the fluids that his body received through the medical capsule, were thrown away by him. I will make sure to use this skill from the distance next time. Evan thought and soon saw the shadow hippo he sent earlier to kill monsters. Now the amount of shadow energy he was receiving from the connection was very low, and he already stopped using his wind manipulation skill. He can even feel the shadow energy his core absorbed earlier was being sent back through the connection. He wasn't sure how much time he has left, so he decided to leave from here as soon as possible. He already told Shadow Layla to collect the cores after killing the monsters. But the Shadow Hippo was different even though Evan doesn't know much, he can feel that the Shadow Hippo can't collect core him. When he reached near Shadow Hippo, he noticed it was fighting against two injured B plus rank monsters. One monster was a 3 meters tall ape, while the other one was a 5 meters tall cyclops with one eye and a big horn on its head. A B rank monster was laying dead not far away from the Shadow Hippo apparently killed by it earlier. Evan noticed even though the Shadow Hippo was fighting against two monsters alone, it had a good advantage in the fight, because the ape and cyclops were badly injured by the tornadoes earlier. Ah, the Shadow Hippo croaks out loud, and the purple flames in its eyes blazed with even more intensity as a large wave of water rose from the ground and engulfed the ape and the cyclops who were badly injured. The destructive power of the water crushed the body of the ape and the cyclops, and their injuries worsened. After the water wave disappeared, both the ape and the cyclops were left in a completely sorry state. The wounds on their body enlarged and blood was flowing out from them uncontrollably. Their aura was way weaker than before, and the spark of life was disappearing from their eyes. But those sparks of life instantly disappeared from their eyes, when two small bullets came down from the sky taking away their lives. Good job. Evan came down from the sky and praised the Shadow Hippo. Grug. The Shadow Hippo grunted in happiness upon hearing Evan and walked toward him. Evan quickly went toward the body of the ape and the Cyclops to look for the core. He didn't find anything in the body of the ape, but he got a core from the Cyclops. He also looked for the core in the body of the B-ranked Panther, but did not find anything. After not finding anything from the Panther, he first used Shadow Resurrection on the ape and the Cyclops at the same time. Shadow Resurrection failed. Bang dash. The body of the ape exploded when he used Shadow Resurrection. Evan was stunned because it exploded on his first try. But he quickly understood what happened. The body of the ape was already severely damaged. And after Shadow Resurrection failed, it wasn't able to endure the damage and exploded. Luckily he learned from his mistake earlier. And was standing a little distance away from the body. When he used Shadow Resurrection, even though the body of the ape exploded, Evan watched with a wide smile as a shadow similar to Cyclops stepped out from its body. I am glad both of them did not explode. Evan muttered while quickly using Shadow Resurrection one more time on the dead B-ranked panther, which was killed by Shadow Hippo before he arrived here. The body of the panther was covered by shadow energy, and soon a black shadow that looks similar to the dead panther came out. Great. Evan laughed out loud seeing Cyclops and the Panther. Master, I am back. Evan was looking at the Cyclops who just walked towards him, when he heard voices of Shadow Layla, and saw her flying towards him. Soon she landed in front of her while holding two cores in her hand. As you ordered, I killed all the monsters there and got these two cores she said to him, while passing 1B plus rank and 1B rank core. Good job Evan said to Shadow Layla who seemed happy after hearing him. Evan took the core and put them away. With this now I have two B plus rank cores, one B rank core, and one A plus rank core that I got from that bear. Evan thought with a satisfied expression on his face. Just when he was ready to leave from there his expression changed, and he thought about a crucial thing that he forget. How the hell am I going to bring them with me? Evan looked at the four shadows in front of him not understanding what to do. Chapter 219 How should I bring them with me? Evan said out loud when he was ready to leave. He wasn't worried about Shadow Layla since she can fly, but the other three can't fly. After pondering for a moment he thought about going forward alone, and asking Shadow Layla to bring them with her, since she knew the way to Aquaville City. But before he can ask her she spoke, Master, you don't have to worry about us. 
We can just move into your shadow. As Lael spoke she moved toward him and went inside his shadow. Evan was scared sh asterisk t less when he saw shadow Layla going inside his shadow. He thought she might take over his body just like how he read in most of the novels. But he soon realized he was worried for nothing. He can actually feel her presence inside his shadow storage. And he can kick her out whenever he wants. And one more thing that he realized was that his shadow storage was way bigger than before. The size of his shadow storage was around 1000 square meters. Holy sh asterisk t isn't it too big. Evan can. T help but think feeling his shadow storage was too big. If they can stay in my shadow. Doesn't it mean I can bring them anywhere with me Evan's eyes can. T help but shine when he thought about bringing out a bunch of higher level shadows while facing someone. But he soon stopped thinking about this. And ordered the other three to move inside his shadow storage. The shadow hippo along with Cyclops and the panther also went inside his shadow storage. Good, now let's get out of here quickly. Evan used his shadow wings and took into the sky. The shadow energy already stopped coming through the connection, and even the energy which his core absorbed earlier to protect his prime core was returning back, so that the burden on his core can be lessened. Evan tried to stop the shadow energy which was returning, and utilized it to use his shadow wings. Boom dash. A sonic boom was produced, and Evan shot forward in the direction Shadow Layla said Aquaville City is located. Evan was using his wings to full power, so that he can reach at the safe place, before the shadow energy inside his core runs out. A streak of black light tore through the sky, and moved forward scattering the clouds that came into his way. It's too fast. Evan screamed inside his mind. Currently, he was flying even faster than the jet which was destroyed earlier. But now that his body doesn't have much shadow energy, his physical abilities were greatly decreased compared to before. He was not even able to see his surroundings clearly because of how fast he was moving. He also started to feel some burden on his mind, because he was using shadow energy to cast his shadow wings. He wasn't feeling anything like this when the energy was coming through the connection. But now that the energy stopped coming through the connection, and he was using the energy of his core, it was placing some burden on his mind. If he stopped using shadow energy, and use mana he will not feel the pressure, but his speed will greatly decrease if he use mana instead of shadow energy. I have to endure it for a little longer. According to Shadow Lail, I am not far from Aquaville City. Evan gritted his teeth and did. T stop using shadow energy. Soon he started to feel a headache, but he didn't stop. The shadow energy which was inside his core was still going back and some of it was being used by him to cast his wings. After 20 minutes of flying, Evan caught glimpses of a city in the far distance. Even though he wasn't able to see clearly because of his fast speed, he was sure that it was the outline of Aquaville City. After seeing the outline of the Aquaville City, Evan finally relaxed and stopped using shadow energy for his wings. When he stopped using shadow energy, the energy from his core started to return at a faster speed. In just a few seconds most of the shadow energy left his core and went back through the connection. But soon he noticed that there was still some shadow energy left in his monarch core, and it wasn't going back. Evan tried to control it, and found he can control it, just like how he used to control one unit of shadow energy that he had. Even though he wasn't sure, Evan can feel that the current amount of shadow energy which remained inside his core was far more than one unit he previously had. Looks like the amount of shadow energy I have also increased after advancing to C rank. Evan thought and continued to fly using shadow wings. Now that he was using mana his speed was greatly decreased compared to before, but it was still faster than his top speed before he reached C rank. The headache he was feeling also started to decrease, since he wasn't using shadow energy anymore. But Evan was feeling completely exhausted after using so much shadow energy earlier. If not for the fact that he was very curious about his new skills and class, he would have already called out Shadow Layla and others to keep watch, and went to sleep in this wilderness. Soon he was just a few kilometers away from the Aquaville city. He first wanted to completely understand his new skills before going back to the city, so that he can be sure that the ghost-like shadows who are inside his shadow storage, will not cause any trouble for him. He landed some distance away from the city and sat down there. Now I can finally take a proper look at my status window being worried about anything. Evan muttered to himself and finally opened his status window. Chapter 220. 
Evan opened his status window and was stunned just after reading the first two notifications. Your Monarch Corps is advancing to C rank. Ruler's authority is being established over the Shadow Realm through the Shadow Monarch Corps. Ruler. S. Authority. Shadow Realm. What are these? Evan muttered in a confused filled voice and read the next notification. Your soul is not strong enough to fully establish the ruler's authority over the Shadow Realm. Process of establishing the ruler's authority is being stopped. When Evan read the third and fourth notifications something clicked in his mind. Is this ruler's authority and Shadow Realm related to the connection which was formed earlier? Evan muttered and find it most likely the case. He still remembered how the connection stopped after reaching at 50%, because his soul wasn't able to handle the burden of the connection. But what the hell is this Shadow Realm and Ruler's authority in reality? Evan muttered while scratching the back of his head, because he was not able to understand what are these two things. When he wasn't able to understand what are these two things, he looked at the next notifications and became even more confused. You have absorbed one of question mark question mark question mark. Your soul is being strengthened because of absorbing question mark question mark question mark. Process of establishing the ruler's authority is starting once again. Why is there question marks? Evan asked himself and frowned. He still remembered a strange energy leaving his body. When the connection stopped forming after reaching 50%. After some time a small portion of that energy came back. And he passed out because of the headache at that time. When he thought about how he passed out, another frown appeared on his face. I saw many strange dreams after passing out. But I can't remember any of them, clearly Evan said to himself while rubbing his temples. When he tried to remember what he saw in the dreams after passing out, he just saw some hazy images. It was like all of those things were sealed by something to not put pressure on his mind. Just what the hell is going on here? Evan looked at the next notification and can't help but sigh. You have absorbed one of question mark question mark question mark. Your soul is being strengthened because of absorbing question mark question mark question mark. He scrolled down and saw there were around 500 notifications of him absorbing something and his soul being strengthened. Tell me what I absorbed to strengthen my soul. Instead of shadowing these stupid question marks Evan said out loud feeling frustrated. Not being able to understand anything. Russell exclamation point exclamation point. Suddenly he heard the sound of rustling coming from some bushes. He looked there and saw and see rank lizard-like monster who just walked out from there. He was so focused looking on the status window that he didn't feel it approaching till now. He was about to summon Shadow Hippo to take care of it when he thought about something. Since there are so many notifications of my soul being strengthened, then I might as well try it. Evan said to himself and looked at the C rank lizard who was approaching him slowly. Mind suppression. He used the spiritual skill that he got from the rhino that he killed during the Orc Den quest. His abyss black eyes suddenly shined with dim light. Squeal exclamation point exclamation point. Just as he used mind suppression, the lizard stopped moving and squealed out in pain. But it did not last long, because something that Evan was not expecting happened to the lizard. Bang exclamation point. With a small bang, the head of the C rank lizard suddenly exploded. Evan was stunned when he saw what happened. But the next second he felt a sense of weakness washing over his mind. His mind was already exhausted after using so much shadow energy earlier. And now that he used a spiritual skill he felt even more tired. Even though his mind was completely exhausted, Evan was feeling incredibly happy. Just a few days ago his spiritual power was even weaker than a D-rank hamster. But now his spiritual power is in a completely different league. You have absorbed one of question mark question mark question mark. Your soul is being strengthened because of absorbing question mark question mark question mark. Just what is this thing that I absorbed to make my soul strengthen like this? Evan can't help but take another look at the notification and mutter to himself. It is very hard to increase the power of the soul. And he was making different kinds of plans to increase his soul's power. After finding his soul was very weak. But that problem is resolved without him doing anything. This is seriously insane Evan said while shaking his head and looked at the next notifications. Successfully established ruler's authority over Shadow Realm. Your core successfully advanced to C rank. One of your hidden titles is resonating with the Shadow Realm. Your hidden title, ruler of the Shadow Realm, is now unlocked. Following are the effects of your title, ruler of the Shadow Realm. 1. Now you have access of the Shadow Energy. 
one of my hidden titles. Evan said to himself remembering there were always some question marks beside his titles. Titles. Rule Breaker, Ruler of the Shadow Realm question mark question mark question mark. He scrolled down and looked at his state window to see his current titles. There were still question marks, which means he still has another title which is locked. He ignored the question marks on his title window and focused back on his new unlocked title. After reading these notifications he finally understood a few things. First, the connection he can feel with his monarch core is defiantly with the Shadow Realm. And the shadow energy he was receiving earlier was coming from this shadow realm as well. Second, after reaching C rank, he somehow became the master of this place called the shadow realm, even though he doesn't know where it is located. And the third and most important thing he understood was the fact that the person responsible for showing details is definitely an A asterisk shoal. Why the F U asterisk K? There are also question marks on the effect of this new title. Evan screamed out loud feeling extremely frustrated. Question marks on the thing that strengthened my soul. Question mark on my title state. Question mark on my title rule breakers effects. And now question mark on this new title as well. Is this M-O-T-H-E-R asterisk Uka the member of? Question mark cult. Or something. Evan cursed while trying to stay calm. He took a deep breath to not curse the seven generations of the person responsible for showing details. And looked at the next notification. When he looked at the next notification his eyes froze because this was the thing he wanted to see the most. You have unlocked your class. Shadow Necromancer. Chapter 221. You have unlocked your class. Shadow Necromancer. You have received the class specific skill. Shadow Resurrection. You have received the class specific skill. Shadow Save. You have received the class specific skill. Shadow Senses. You have received the skill. Shadow Wings. You have received the unique skill. Shadow Possession. Shadow Necromancer. Evan muttered with his eyes wide open. When he saw the word Resurrection earlier, he thought he got class like a Shadow Priest or Shadow Saint. But in reality, he got a class related to necromancy, which is completely opposite of the priest and saint. You can't judge a skill by its name Evan said to himself, and looked at the details of his new skills. Shadow Resurrection Ash you can use shadow energy to create a shadow undead from a lifeless corpse. The shadow undead will have the same level as the corpse from which it is created. You can use the skill on the corpses that are two levels above you. The chances of shadow resurrection failing increases depending on the target's strength and the condition of its body. If a shadow undead is destroyed, you can summon it again using mana. Evan read the details of the skill carefully and can't help but take a breath of cold air after reading all the details. The best thing he found was the fact that he can summon shadow undead even if it was destroyed and he doesn't need shadow energy for it. Doesn't it mean I will have undead that will never be destroyed as long as I have enough mana? Evan thought while gulping down his saliva, but he soon noticed something and raised an eyebrow. I can use shadow resurrection only on someone who is two levels above me, then how was I able to use it on Layla and others Evan can? T help but think since his monarch core is still C rank. The two levels above C should be C plus and B rank, but he was still able to use shadow resurrection on Layla who was an A-rank hunter. But he soon understood what is going on. His monarch core doesn't have levels like C+, or B+, it only has levels like F, E, D, and so on. That means according to his monarch core, two levels above it are B and A-rank. So with his current monarch core rank, he can use this skill on everyone below their S-rank. Just thinking about the fact that he can have an army of shadow undead made from A-plus rankers, made his blood boil. Let's calm down for now. Without the support of the shadow energy, there is no way I will be able to kill an A plus ranker and turn it into shadow undead. Evan shook his head and tried to clear his head. He looked at the details of the next skill and was a little disappointed after reading its details. So I can't have an army with my current strength. Evan sighed and took a deep breath. Shadow save colon you can use shadow energy to create unlimited shadow undeads. But you can only preserve five of them. Shadow undead who are not preserved will disappear after one hour. Number of preserved shadows colon four fifths. The number of shadows you can preserve will increase along with your rank. I can create an unlimited number of shadow undead. But can only preserve five of them using shadow save. Well, if I want to create my army. I just have to increase my rank. 
Evan said to himself and smiled slightly, seeing he can increase the number of preserved shadows by increasing his rank. Even though he was a little disappointed, he did not think too much about it. With the help of his four shadow undead, it will not be difficult for him to gather cores and increase his rank in the future. He stopped thinking about creating his army for now, and looked at the details of his next skill. Shadow senses colon you can share all senses with your shadow undead regardless of the distance. Evan read the details and his eyes lit up. He summoned the shadow hippo from his shadow storage. Go and run around the wilderness for some time Evan said to the shadow hippo after summoning it. Grew. The shadow hippo acknowledged his order and ran away from there without asking anything. Let's see. When the shadow hippo disappeared from his sight he closed his eyes and used shadow sense skill to connect with the shadow hippo. Suddenly his view changed and he started to see what the hippo was seeing. Along with the view he was even able to hear what the hippo was hearing. This skill will be very useful for me. Evan thought while looking around. Suddenly he thought about something and immediately tried it. Come back? He tried to command the shadow hippo to come back through their connected senses. If he can even communicate with them through the share senses skill, it will be very helpful. Just as Evan said it to come back through their connected senses, the hippo stopped running and turned around to go back. With this skill, it will be very easy for me to gather information or spy on someone. Evan thought to himself and stopped using the skill. When he stopped using skill his vision returned to normal. After his vision returned to normal, he looked at the details of his next skill which he used just a while ago. Shadow Wings Ash create two wings of shadow using mana. The more mana you use on the wings, the faster you will be able to fly. The wings also have a great defense and can be used as a shield to weaken or stop an attack. When Evan read the details of the skill he was surprised. He already knew about the flying details of the wings. But he was surprised that those wings also have a great defense. All of these skills are not normal. Evan can't help but say after seeing even the shadow wings was a special skill. After reading its details Evan took a deep breath and looked at the details of his next skill. He was quite excited about it because it was a unique skill which he never thought he will get even before reaching to B rank. Chapter 222 Shadow Possession Colon you can merge yourself with any shadow undead you have preserved. You will receive all the abilities of the shadow undead you have merged with yourself. If the shadow undead you have merged is of higher rank than you, then your rank will be increased to the same level as that of the shadow undead. If the shadow undead is a lower rank than you, then all of your base stats will be increased by 50%. The effect of the skill will last for 2 minutes. Cool down colon, 10 hours. Evan read the details of the skill and his eyes opened wide. There was just one word that came into his mind after reading the details of the skill. Ridiculous. At first glance, the skill looks quite normal, but when he deeply thought about the effect of the skill, he can't help but feel that this skill is also ridiculous, just like other skills he received. Since I can merge with any preserved shadow undead, doesn't it mean I can merge myself with Shadow Layla? and my rank will be increased to A for 2 minutes. Evan muttered while feeling this skill is breaking the concept of ranks. If his rank increased to A, he was sure that he will be able to fight against an A plus ranker without any problem, because of the boost that his 2 cores provides him. With this skill, he will be able to face even an A plus ranker for 2 minutes, without the help of his shadow energy. If I merge with someone who is lower rank than me, then I will receive a 50% boost in all of my stats. But I don't have any shadow undead who is lower rank than me. Evan mumbled while shrugging his shoulders. He never planned to create a shadow undead who is weaker than him unless that shadow undead have something unique. Unique skills are really different from normal skills. Evan smiled and closed his status window. Now that he has shadow possession, he was more confident about dealing with the Dark Guild. He still remembered Layla telling him she captured him because someone ordered her. He wanted to ask Shadow Layla if she has memories of the original Layla. According to what Evan saw till now, she doesn't behave like an undead at all. She can make her own decision like how she attacked the hippopotamus when it appeared near him. Or how she told him about the fact that they can move into his shadow storage. If Shadow Layla has memories of the original Layla, 
he will be able to gather important information about the Dark Guild from her. There were still many things that he wanted to know about these shadow undead like, can he increase their level? Can they think on their own or are they just mindless puppets? And many more things. But this wasn't the time. Currently, his mind is completely exhausted, and he wanted nothing more than to sleep. Huh, my body is in a complete mess. Evan sighed while examining himself. And when he said his body is in complete mess he was referring from both outside and inside. His body was still covered in the blood of the A plus rank bear which exploded when he used shadow resurrection on it. There were even some chunks of small flesh stuck in his hair. But more than anything he was concerned about his prime core. It looks like it will shatter at any moment Evan said to himself with a frown on his face. His prime core was damaged because of the pressure of his monarch core earlier. It was filled with cracks from all over the place, and looks like it will crumble at any moment. When his prime core was damaged in the Shadow Kingdom dungeon, he used the refined energy of the core to heal it. But looking at the current condition of his prime core, he was sure that if he tries to heal it using the energy of the core, it won't be able to endure it, and will definitely crumble. I can just wait for it to recover naturally for some time before using the energy of a core to heal itself Evan said while sighing. Currently, he has enough cores to advance his prime core to C rank. He wanted to see what will happen when his prime core reach C rank, but looking at its current condition, he knew he will have to wait for some time, before he can advance it to C rank. Not only my prime core, even my monarch core is at the peak of C rank, thanks to the shadow energy. Once my prime core reaches C rank, I can immediately increase the rank of my monarch core to B rank. Evan said while showing a gleeful smile. Thinking about how he will be able to preserve more shadow after increasing his rank made his blood boil from excitement. Let's go back to the city to take a good rest before thinking about what to do next. Evan stood up and was ready to go back to the city when he noticed his current look was even worse than a beggar. Then he remembered what he saw during the fight of the Shadow Hippo. It used water to blow away both the Cyclops and the Ape at that time. Evan said while rubbing his chin, and looked at the Hippo who returned from running a few minutes ago. Can you create some water so that I can clean myself a little? Evan asked the Shadow Hippo. Gra. The Shadow Hippo grunted, and Evan saw a blob of water appear in front of him. Perfect. Evan nodded his head and used the floating blob of water to clean his face which was completely red because of blood. After cleaning himself a little, so that he will look like a human, Evan nodded his head and made his way toward the city gate. Since it was quite normal for hunters to come in tattered clothes, and covered in blood after fighting against monsters, no one asked him anything, and he entered the city without any problem. Chapter 223 While walking away from the city gate, Evan once again looked at his status window. Name. Evan. Rank. E+. Plus. Monarch core rank, E. Strength, E+. Plus. Agility, E+. Plus. Mana, E+. Plus. Stamina, E+. Plus. Intelligence, E+. Plus. Luck, E. Charm, E. Shadow energy, E. Skills, Ash shadow walk, Haste dimensional shadow bullet, Ice chains, Wind manipulation, Shadow wings, Physique, Ash shadow monarch physique, Title, Rule Breaker, Ruler of the Shadow Realm question mark question mark question mark. Class, Ash Shadow Necromancer. Class Skills, Ash Shadow Resurrection, Shadow Save, Shadow Senses, Shadow Possession. Evan ignored all the things including his luck and charm, who was screaming for attention. Yes, good looks are important, but power is more important than the good look. It is not like he is the protagonist of an Eero novel where he has to praise his good looks after every 10 seconds. He ignored the charm and good luck who was screaming for attention with a cold look on his face, and showed a perverted smile when he saw his shadow energy state. So now I have shadow energy just like Mana Evans said to himself after seeing instead of one unit, now the shadow energy was showing C. He once again checked his monarch core, and saw there was still shadow energy inside it. He can control it just like how he was able to control the one unit of shadow energy. I still have to check if I will get any backlash or not after using it. Earlier he was using shadow energy coming through his connection with the shadow realm. And did not receive any backlash even after using so much shadow energy. Previously, he receives backlash even after using just one unit of shadow energy. 
He wasn't sure, but he has a feeling that now he might not receive severe backlash because of the effect of his title Master of the Shadow Realm. Following are the effects of your title, Ruler of the Shadow Realm. 1. Now you have access of the Shadow Energy. Since it says now I have access of the Shadow Energy I shouldn't receive a backlash, right? Evan said to himself and tried his best not to test it out right now. His mind was currently fully exhausted. If he tried to use Shadow Energy now, he might pass out. He closed his status window and soon grabbed a taxi. The funeral resort where he stayed before wasn't far from there. It took him around 30 minutes to reach the funeral resort. After paying the taxi bill he walked inside the resort. He paid the bill using his phone, since he got it back from Layla's storage ring. After killing her he didn't forget to take her storage ring. He just took back his things and still didn't check what is inside her storage ring, since he was currently quite exhausted. So around one month passed since I was abducted. Evan muttered while walking inside the resort. Even though he doesn't remember all the dreams he saw when he was unconscious, he still remembers he passed out for a long time. Earlier he even thought he was unconscious for years, so he was quite glad that only one month passed by. When he booked his room, Evan noticed the female receptionist was looking at him with a weird gaze. Even though he cleaned himself a little with the help of the shadow hippo, he was still looking like a beggar. Evan can understand what she was thinking since the resort was quite expensive. He sighed and first paid the bill, so that she will not call out the security to throw him out. And, just as expected from a professional, after he first paid the bill, she showed a professional smile, and handed over the key of his room. Evan took the key and walked away from there without any expression on his face. But inside he was sighing heavily. He purchased armor before the start of the Orc Den mission. After purchasing the armor he was completely broken. And now after booking the room, his bank balance is all time low. I don't even have enough money to eat something good. Evan thought and arrived in his room. I just hope I will get something good from Layla's storage ring Evan said to himself and walked toward the bathroom. Evan took off his clothes and switched on the shower. I still have to visit the dungeon to get the energy absorption skill Evan said, while feeling the sensation of cold water all over his body. It took him around half an hour to properly clean himself. After showering when he walked out and saw himself in the mirror, he noticed a mark on his glabella. What is this? Evan frowned and took a closer look. This mark looks similar to the shape of one unit of shadow energy, which used to rotate around my monarch core, Evan mumbled, after taking a closer look at the mark. The mark was pitch black in color, and looks like a water drop. The mark matched with his black hair and abyss black eyes, giving him a mystical look. Even though it looks quite good it will definitely attract unwanted attention from other people. Evan said while rubbing his mark. Just as he said this the mark on his forehead started to decrease in size. Soon the mark on his glabella turned into a small black dot. Which can't be seen unless you take a closer look. He thought about increasing the size of the mark. And it returned to normal. So I can control its size Evan said to himself. And once again turned it into a small dot. After wearing clothes Evan looked at the bed and the coffin beside it. After pondering for some time he made his decision and walked toward the coffin. Even though I am not a vampire, for a necromancer a coffin is more suitable than the bed Evan said with a chuckle and lay inside down inside the coffin present in the room. After just a few seconds of laying, the fatigue of using shadow energy kicked in and Evan fall asleep. Chapter 224 Evan woke up feeling fully refreshed, his mind which was dizzy because of using shadow energy, was now completely recovered. He came out from the coffin and looked outside of the window while stretching his stiff body. Looks like I slept for quite some time, Evan muttered when he saw it was completely dark outside. He looked at the watch and was surprised to see it was already midnight. He arrived at the hotel at 10am, which means he slept for more than 12 hours. Considering. How I was going through continuous headaches even when I was passed out. I think it is normal for me to sleep for so long. Evan said to himself while looking at the flowing aqua river from the window of his room. The cool morning breeze caressed his cheeks while his hair fluttered in the air. Looking at the silent and beautiful view he felt his eyes becoming heavy. And he wanted to sleep once again. Growl. Just when he was about to sleep his stomach grumbled like it was protesting. Evan's eyes become clear once again and he walked toward the bathroom to wash his face. After washing his face he came out from the bathroom, 
and extended his right hand while doing an extravagant pose. Whoosh! Exclamation point. When he extended his hand something shot out from his shadow storage, and he caught it without any problem. Back to basics how Evan said after catching the thing and looking at it with twitching eyes. The thing in his hand was a legendary box of cup noodles. Since he patched up with his girlfriend named Poverty. After buying that armor he returned to basic once again. Before going on the Orc Den mission, he bought some packets of cup noodles for an emergency. Since he did not have enough money to buy anything else. He can try to look in Layla's storage ring. But it was unlikely he will find something like money in the storage ring of an A-rank hunter. There might be some valuable items in the storage ring. But it is not like he can eat those items. He used his signature method to prepare the cup noodles. He opened the cup noodles box. Poured some hot water into it. And quickly closed the box again. Yes. His signature method is written behind all the packs of cup noodles. After 3 minutes the noodles were ready. He opened the lid of the cup noodle and smelled its aroma. And without any surprise the cup noodles smelled like well cup noodles. After nodding his head Evan picked up the fork and scooped noodles in his mouth. After taking his first bite a surprised expression appeared on his face. Since I didn't eat cup noodles for quite some time. It surprisingly tastes good Evan said while taking another bite. He finished the entire pack of cup noodles. But he wasn't satisfied, so he made another one. After eating the second pack his stomach finally stopped protesting. When you are hungry everything tastes good. I think I now understand the meaning of this sentence Evan said, while picking up the empty boxes of the cup noodles, and throwing them away into the dustbin of the room. Now that my stomach stopped protesting I can look at Lila's storage ring. Evan mumbled while throwing himself on the soft bed. He used his shadow storage, and a storage ring came out from it. He picked up the ring, erased Lila's mark, and used a drop of his blood to bind the storage ring with himself. Now let's see what is inside it. He looked inside the storage ring, and the first thing he saw was something that can be expected from every woman. They were obviously clothes and cosmetics. At least my girlfriend Poverty is very good in this department, and doesn't ask for useless things like these. Evan said while ignoring the clothes and cosmetics. But when he looked at the next item his eyes instantly lit up. He took out the item he just saw and a light red pink sword with a black hilt appeared in his hand. The sword was the same size as his wind fury and was giving him a strange feeling like it was not real but an illusion. Soon when Evan looked at its name he understood why the sword was giving him this strange feeling. Illusion Weaver colon. A sharp sword made from Algoth. A high level material that can only be found in a place full of fire element. The creator of the sword mixed rare illusion stones inside Algoth while making the sword. While holding the sword the spiritual power of the user will be increased by 10%. If you have skills related to the illusion element their power will be enhanced by 25%. Once a day you can use skill illusion sword world. Illusion sword world dash. Trap your opponents inside an illusion world full of sword aura. If the spiritual power of your opponent is not strong enough there is a high chance his soul will be greatly damaged because of the sword aura inside the illusion sword world. Evan read the details of the sword and looked at it carefully once again. He can easily see that the sword was sharper than the wind fury and he will be able to injure even monsters who have a high level of defense with it. The skill illusion sword world is also quite good but I think wind fury is more suitable for me since I have wind manipulation skill. With the help of wind fury he can increase the power of his wind manipulation skill greatly, so he doesn't want to change it. Besides, he doesn't have illusion related skill that this sword can enhance. Wait a minute. Suddenly Evan thought about what he saw yesterday. When Shadow Layla killed, that hippo she used a skill that made the hippo daze for a moment. Was that a skill related to illusion? Evan muttered and thought about asking to Shadow Layla later. If she has a skill related to illusion she can use this sword better than him. Since she is working for him, then increasing her power means increasing his own power. He put away the sword and looked at the next thing inside the ring. This. When Evan looked inside the ring he was stunned because he found something that he never thought he will find in a storage ring. Chapter 225. A skill book. Evan's eyes widened as he saw a book with golden luster inside the storage ring. Even though he never used a skill book before, he knew how they looked from the images he saw on the internet. He quickly took out the book, and it appeared in his hand. The book's cover was golden in color, 
with a small clock engraved on the front side of it. Never thought that I will get a skill book from her storage ring. Evan muttered while looking at its details. Time dilation dash. This skill alters the perception of time for you, making everything around you appear slower while you retain your normal speed. This ability can be us for strategic planning, evading attacks, or executing precise maneuvers. Evan read the details of the skill, and a big smile blooms on his face. If this was a normal skill he would have sold it to get something good in return, since unlike others he can get skills without even using skill books. But after reading the details Evan immediately made up his mind. There is no way he will sell a skill like this. With this skill, he will have an easier time while fighting. He will be able to analyze the attack of the enemy more clearly, and can take precise measurements against it. Evan followed the instructions he read on the internet about how to use a skill book. He hold the skill book in his hand and started to pour his mana into it. Just as Evan started to pour mana into the book, its golden colored cover lit up. Slowly the books turned into mots of golden light and was absorbed by his body. Evan felt a strange energy circulating inside his body, but he didn't resist it because he didn't feel any kind of threat from it. After a few seconds, the energy circulating inside him started to disappear. You have learned the skill. Time dilation. Just as the energy disappeared a notification appeared before him. Seeing he successfully learned a useful skill, Evan nodded his head and was about to look at other things in the storage ring. When another notification appeared before him. Time dilation and haste skills are compatible with each other. Do you want to merge both skills into one? Yes slash no. Evan looked at the notifications with a stunned look for a moment before he pressed yes with an eager look on his face. Till now he merged two skills, and both of them turned out to be on a completely different level than the other skills. Time dilation is already a high level skill. He wanted to see what will happen after it will merge with the haste skill. Just like every time, his monic core started to rotate when he pressed yes. He felt his mana being drained at rapid speed. But now that he was at C rank, his mana reserves were also very high when compared to before, so it did not affect him much. After some time his core started to slow down. With anticipation filled eyes, Evan waited for the details of his new skills. Soon his core returned to normal and stopped rotating. You have learned the skill. Temporal Velocity. Temporal Velocity colon. This skill will alter your perception of time, making everything around you appear slower, while increasing your agility by 30% at the same time. Evan read the details of the skill and found everything was the same except for one thing. Even though there was only one change, this single change was more than enough to put a big smile on his face. Previously the skill was just increasing my perception of time allowing me to see everything in slow motion. But if my body can't react fast enough there is no point in seeing everything around you in slow motion. But with the increase of 30% in my agility, it will be even easier for me to react according to enemy attack. Evan said while rubbing his chin. He stood up from the bed and picked up the storage ring of Layla. After standing up, he lightly threw the storage ring upward, and at the same time activated the temporal velocity skill. When he activated the skill, the world around him slowed down, as he watched the ring he threw in the air move upwards in slow motion. The ring continues to move before hitting the ceiling of the room. After hitting the ceiling the ring started to fall down, but Evan felt it was falling very slowly. He felt like he was controlling the time around him to slow down the world. But in reality, it was just his mind which was processing everything around him very fast. So that he can see everything slowly. The ring slowly came down after hitting the ceiling. He moved his hand forward and easily caught the ring. After catching the ring he stopped using temporal velocity. And the world around him returned to normal. Perfect Evan said after seeing the effect of the skill. But when he saw the mana consumption of the skill he smiled warily. The mana consumption of this skill is even higher than the shadow walk skill Evan said while sitting down once again. Even though the mana consumption of the skill was quite high, he did not care about it. Since the effect of the skill was way better than he expected. After sitting down Evan once again looked inside the ring to see what other treasures were this ring was hiding. Useless, useless, useless. Evan continued to say as he saw many useless things inside the ring. Most of the things inside her ring were documents related to her guild, which was completely useless to him. After just finding useless things for some time, Evan was attracted by a small thing sitting at the corner of the storage ring. He felt the thing looked somewhat familiar, 
What is this? Evan muttered and took out that small thing from the storage ring. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.